Yes. yes. Hello. Is the camera frozen or am I? Who's to say? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How is it going? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm ready for tonight. The beers look great. Thank you. Y'all look great tonight. I think we'll still blame you for breaking everything. Y'all remember the Discord thing last night? You know what? For once, it actually wasn't me who broke it. Which I'm happy. I'm happy about that. But, but... Somehow it was me. Uh, you know? But we fixed it! Oh, boy. Hope y'all are ready. What did Jim show you? He literally won't tell me. I mean, who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> oh! Let's get these alerts started and let's get moving. The thing is, I don't know. I don't know how long th this is going to take, honestly. We're going to find out. Because I know it's like, it'll be like a lot of reading and stuff, but. We'll see how long we last. And then I don't know what we'll do afterwards. Because I don't think this will last the whole night. Well, I'm going to read for y'all, but you don't have to read if you don't want. You know? But like I haven't real I haven't watched anyone play it because I was like I don't want anything to be spoiled for me so we're gonna uh we're gonna find out isn't this an adult game? yes absolutely it is <laughs> will you do voices I will not do voices no. <laughs> Uh, Lisa Elizabeth started off tonight with 100 bits. It's my birthday today. I won't be able to stay for a stream because I fell down the stairs and injured myself badly. But can you please sing happy birthday so I can hear it on the VOD and perhaps a fuck off the stairs in general? Oh, no. Yes, stairs. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Fuck off. <laughs> also, ha happy free. Birthday. Happy birthday, Lisa! I know you're not here right now, but you know, on the VOD, hey. Uh, that little Egyptologist, thank you for the 27 month support. Thank you so much. Gabby the Mini Mac with the 200 bits test positive for COVID today. Uh, and your VODs have been keeping me company in quarantine. Oh my god. I am so sorry. Hopefully, quick recoveries, and hopefully it's uh I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm glad you're here and, you know, we'll be here the whole week. No days off until Saturday because I'm taking off the next weekend off. So I'll be here every day this week. Uh, Caroline the Friendly Ghost, thank you for the four months support. Woo, four months. So happy to be part of this amazing community. Bap. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Thank you for the four months. Thanks for being here. Marlena, thank you so much for the six months support. Damn, that intro gets me pumping every time. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Beckmeister, thank you for the 18 months. We're happy 18 months of screams and giggles. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And Rising Smoke with the 14 months. 14 months. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, shall we? I honestly, like, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to find out, though. We're going to find out. We're going to find out.
All right. <laughs> Damn. Ooh. Oh, that drink looks nice too. <laughs> Jackie B, thank you for the three months more. Who we fall in love with today, Jason? I don't know yet. We'll find out. New file. What shall we call you? We'll do Jason. I should have done Steve. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, well. We're just coughing. Um, there we go. So we're coughing. You wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging inside of your throat, as if you, as if you'd nearly drown. Oh. Well, my throat's already hurting. So how are we gonna play this game? <laughs> Oh, good. Just, I'm just in time. <laughs> uh, all right. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. <gasps> Did you like that? You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. Oh, jeez. Exceeded Tito, thank you for the 26 months. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Oh, no. I hope I'm okay. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> wow. Really went down the wrong pipe, huh? Who's to say? You need a minute? Or can I go on? Who? Who's talking? Not me yet. Because I can give you a minute. We got plenty of time. Endless time, really. Oh, yes. Yes. Endless time. Oh, oh shit! Oh, this is the uh, an eternity if you catch my drift. Fuck! Oh my! Whoa! Not now, Ocean. Sorry, Jason. May I continue? <laughs> shit! Oh God! Please go on. Okay, okay then. As I was. Oh. <laughs> cough, cough. Oh. As I was saying, who's talking? You look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a nearly, a newly arrived wave. I'm going to read all of this wrong tonight. I'm sorry, y'all. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Oh. A decomposing face stares up at you from the beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other ick. So I vomited on the head? Questions race uh, through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Who's to say? Oh! Dig up that face. <laughs> Close your eyes, run. What do we want to do? Do 
Why is it poke at an option? I feel like that's the closest to dig up the face as our closest thing. What would Steve do? Steve would need to know what's going on. You brushed the sand away from the half buried human head embedded in the ground before you. Whoa! There is no body, just a head. As you pick it up, flakes of skin fall to the ground. The jaw falls open, revealing a gold coin sitting on a rotting tongue of this poor dead soul. Oh my. Getting your hands dirty, I see. I like that. You're a you're a take charge type. Ooh. <laughs> well. Ayo. You examine the gold uh, briefly, happily distracted from what uh, what has otherwise been extremely confusing morning. The sun beats down on you, drying your clothes. You check your pockets, but they're empty. Plenty of room for a gold coin, you suppose. So you so you deposit it. All right, it's in my pocket now. Why? That's a nice coin you've got there. What if you were to spend it right now? Now, we know what I would do in DBD, and we would not. No thanks. Oh, me. No thanks. No thanks, me. Look, I'm gonna level with you here. The coin you found, it's mine. I dropped it yesterday, and I've been looking all over for it. Dropped it into a dead person's mouth? Could you just give it back? Mm, no. No. Psh, be that way then. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. Oh! When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand next to you. Volleyball! You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. You turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. Oh! Oh my! What is happening? <laughs> Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well tended volleyball court. <laughs> Oh my. Each of them oozes with undead energy. A magical aura reaches, uh, reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire. Uh, you can't help but stare at these casually dressed, let's call them killers. I don't know. Not to be ju judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? There are some weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at these monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. <laughs> what do you do? Who's to say? Oh, toss it back. Kick it back. Say no thanks. Say nothing. Do nothing. I would toss it back. You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Oh, shit. Not bad, stranger. Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand.
<laughs> these sentences, y'all. These sentences. Okay. <laughs> uh, <you> <laughs> Mikey, thank you for the scare of its Huntress Mommy. I'm right on time. You are right on time. You look her up and down and consider what it, <laughs> what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty. But that's okay. It's natural. Oh, spirit. Try hard much? Blah. They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion, intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way. And nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Ah, oh, it's the ocean! Don't be scared, Jason. You were made for this. Well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. There we go. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. You do... <laughs> Uh-oh. You derailed the game by showing up, Nitwit. Damn. And I guess you're also a new hit. Uh, look, it's, it's, uh, it's best just to go with that, with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. <laughs> Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. Oh, shit. What's your deal? What brings you here? Oh, it's Trapper again. You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? <sighs> that was Wraith. The sigh means he was done with the game too. Oh my. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. <laughs> Look, I don't care why this slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? You know you can't. At least not yet. Oh. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, Jason, you might want to... You know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. Oh, shit. But be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. Oh, shit. Courtney, thank you for the 37 months. Can I get a bat for starting my second year of teaching on Wednesday? Let's go. Thanks for always making my evenings entertainment, Jason. Entertaining, Jason. Thank you so much, Courtney. And you got this. Get you a good bat. Uh, bat, 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 bat. That was a good bat. But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. This is a timed quiz and it will be very important later. Oh God, we gotta do timed? Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one, I can't remember. <laughs> How attractive would you say you are? Uh, average. I'm pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd, another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. Oh my god. I think you're quite cute myself, like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. Oh, we're going. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? 
Oh, super strength. Super strength would be cool. Strength isn't all about muscles. True strength is up here. You expect Trapper to point to his head, but instead he taps one of his bulging shoulders. <laughs> it's specifically in these muscles. Nobody gives a shit about your calves. <laughs> Damn. What was your best subject in school? Math. Probably math. It's the only thing that makes sense when you think about it. What's your favorite animal? Cat. Definitely a cat. Dot, dot, dot. What? Every Why is everyone looking at me? You think just because I'm a typical cute goth girl, I have to... I have some specific love of all things cats? And more specifically, black cats? Well, I do, but you can all go to hell anyway. Oh. Okay, spirit. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Blue isn't good for productivity. Oh, the trapper. Makes people want to be lazy. What's your dream job? Not work. Not working at all. If we if we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Only she could spin laziness into some kind of grand crusade. These damned millennials. Best flavor of ice cream. Chocolate. <laughs> My favorite flavor is pain. Same. Same here. Oh, Wraith is thinking about it. Oh, what? It skipped Wraith! Oh, boy. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream. Am I right? Are, are you? Hold on. Hold on a second. This reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator. You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? We're going to listen to him. Mint chip. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're going to do just fine. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants uh, you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. Okay. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like to, I like nice people and loathe big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. <laughs> I like Spirit for that one. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. I, mm, I like that. But but the things I do hate, I really hate. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone's subservient to those in power it's better to choose to just not take part damn spirit is something Jeez, it's like she was downright murdered by society she hates it so much <laughs> she's relatable right uh gap go it's your birthday ha happy Birthday. Happy birthday! Thanks for being on your birthday. El Funk, thank you for the 21 month support! Oh, OMG, hey, 21 months back! 21 months, almost two years, let's go. Alright. 
Uh, oh no, wait, I'm remembering spirit story now, and that's almost exactly what happened, right. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Oh. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow up on it. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog bunny. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. <laughs> Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time I ever agree with Wraith. For the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Let's move on. Otherwise, they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I actually agree with Meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's a massive boat docked nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Damn. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it's flaunted needlessly, and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging by the pool? I find water calming simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all seriously? That's a perfectly good lounge to chill. Uh, to chill out right here. I'm tired. And besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? Oh, shit. Is this where we, like, kind of choose what we're doing? You know what? How's it? Here, this is what we'll do. Let's do a, let's do a poll. I will let you all tell me where to go. So just say Wraith, Trapper, Spirit, or Huntress. I'll let y'all choose it. Does that sound fine? Could, could someone run the, um, run a survey, please? Well, no, 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 no. We're gonna, we're gonna do a vote. There we go. Thank you. I'm gonna vote, but I'm not gonna tell y'all what my vote is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We got some time. Which is which, though? All right, so, yeah, I'll show you. So this will be Huntress. Uh, this is Trapper. Uh, is Spirit, and then this is Wraith? Right? Lounge is Spirit. Okay, and then this is Wraith. Gotcha. Okay. So far, Spirit is winning the most. I did not think Spirit would win. Y'all really do not like Trapper. Spirit and Wraith have the most votes. I, I honestly thought 
Huntress would be up there too. I know the thing she was saying, I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I know, I hope they do more of these though. You went for uh, for for Trapper. Wraith just seems so gen. <laughs> we're, we're all so bad at this. <laughs> They're all killers. <laughs> all right. It looks like Spirit's the winner. Wait, Spirit's this one? Yeah. All right. It'd be great to relax for a second at the lounge. To kick up your feet, look out, look out over the ocean, and relax on your own terms. Who would want anything else? Dry, comfortable, enjoying a cool drink on a hot day. It's the best. I mean, honestly, a lounge is pretty cool. I mean, what kind of fool, what kind of monster, what kind of mask-wearing psychopath would finally be granted a break from the constant grind of chasing and fighting to get ahead and then choose to exert themselves in, quite frankly, any way whatsoever. Why am I the only one who gets it? It's time to stop living by their rules. I won't do it any longer. All right, spirit. Yeah, we should probably give her a second to calm down. Okay. Oh! Claudette, hold on! Dwight, just for just one moment. Hey, I don't know y'all were coming in. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. Yes, I love this. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only help remaining on the island. Oh no. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cue dramatic musical flourish. None of the others survived. Um, survived the interview process, I mean. <laughs> Hence why we shall, shall heretofore refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time, so very long. I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. Uh, they sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. Uh, we will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with options whenever possible. And just don't, and, and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. Uh, the least you can do is allow us to do our job. All right. The most you could do is help us get off this. Uh Dwight! Yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Hey, narrator. Oh, that's me. Hey, narrator. Yes, something I can help you with. These two, Claudette and Dwight, did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape them? Oh, no, 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 no. You th I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that, yes, that's true, he was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway, a couple of miles south of here. Uh, it has much fa fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Uh, doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money that comes 
uh, comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly, when I agree with them. Not like that other island. So what'll it be? Are they, do you think the other island is DBD the game? <laughs> Wait, I get to choose again? Oh, they're making sure. Okay. Finally, freedom from the preposterous pre premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Uh, Spirit looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. She takes a conspiratorial tone. I don't know whose idea volleyball was in the fir first place, but I hate them. <laughs> I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. Then I tried to annoy everyone, but not giving a crap, and when that didn't work, I tried whining, and when that didn't work, I threatened to kill every single person on this island, but <laughs> it turns out I'm not the first to toss those kinds of threats around on this island. So, thanks, I guess, for getting it called off. Are we threatening to end each other again? <laughs> now it's Dwight who takes a, a conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please, just make it quick. Is that what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar to make you a dr you the drink of your dreams? God! Ah, <laughs> hilarious, right? Right, Dwight? Yeah, right, right. So, what will you be having? On a day like today, I could use something strong. Scotch on the rocks. Claudette uncorks a very expensive looking bottle of top shelf liquor and pours you a glass. Do enjoy. Who would drink that? It smells like kerosene. Wraith, where'd you come from? Oh, oh! You need to embrace the burning! The, the burning? Oh yeah! Why would you embrace that? Burning is... Wraith stifles a sob. No, I can't even think about it. Well then don't! No skin off my back, you weirdo! Come to think of it. Strong, expensive, better the longer you leave it locked in the basement. Scotch is the best! Trapper guzzles half of the bottle and burps. It'd be disgusting if it wasn't so. No, disgusting is exactly what it is. Since we fulfilled your requ requests, it's time to re for you to return the favor. I should have known there was a catch. Oh, it skipped something. I swear, di is it skipping something or is it just like an auto thing? I don't know. I swear I had known they'd pull this kind of faux enthusiastic community building crap. Uh, I'd have suggested we'd attempt to walk to the lowest point of the ocean before I've ever set foot near this bar. You don't think it could be kind of fun? A little fun? Never mind. I hate it. This sucks, but it could be fun. Or whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? I've literally never seen him in a hat. If we mu must make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do some, some lame improv game that nerds learn at their non-sports after-school activities that I definitely will nev never did because I'm no nerd. Methinks a certain someone doth protest too much. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my severed feet. The topic I choose is books, novels, comic, fiction or non. Uh, reading is the only real escape from the inescapable horror life. The escape into your own mind. A groan rolls through the crowd. Not a lot of readers here, I'd imagine, based on that response. They were much more enthusiastic about drinking. 
Uh, Wicked, thank you for the two months for at JSAM, who we fall in love with today. I think we're doing spirit. Beaming with the 100 bits. If you use enter key to progress the dialogue, it won't skip, like, with the mouse. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do that. Uh, considering the situation we're in, it seems appropriate time to ask you. Jason, what's your dessert island book? What's your de dessert, <laughs> desert island book? Uh, the one book you'd bring, uh, with you if you were, well, on an island like this. Oh, and it has to be classes core for reasons that should be obvious. She means this <laughs> because this is an island of horror villains. And also, those books are all in the public, are all in the public domain. <laughs> Nothing too modern. Humanity has really gotten soft these past hundred years. So what's your favorite? Oh. Let's, what should we do? Dracula? Let's do Dracula. Dracula is one classic that's still scary. To be seduced by some beautiful stranger only to learn later that they're an immortal villain. It's downright thrilling. Well, I guess, but I was going to say that despite the devi deviant behavior of Dracula and the threat of possible danger or even death that he poses, uh, you can't help but get turned on by the liberation from the status quo that he represents. Oh, I think we picked the right one. <laughs> Same here. So what if, what if some old doctor says he's a bad boy? You're supposed to reek like garlic and sleep alone? Who thinks they would buy into that? If you're going to be trapped uh, in the nightmare that is undead life eternal, which I know a little something about, you could do a lot worse than great clothes, a castle, and a lover who doesn't take shit from anyone. The scariest part of Dracula is thinking that no one will ever be quite as interesting uh, to make love to as a vampire. Oh shit! Enough about these old stories that belong to someone else. I think it's time to make uh, up some new stories of our own. Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air. A devilish twinkle in her half mask covered eye. Might I suggest something a little naughty? Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Oh! Great idea. What are, what are you doing here? Trickster, isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who makes the rules, so I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello, and who is this new fan in the waiting? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh hack. I don't know what's the harm in inviting one more person to join the circle for our game oh I can't stay I was just what saying what the hell is even that oh I can't stay I was just saying it's a great idea while also teasing the secret trickster ending oh there's a secret trickster ending Oh my. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Toodaloo. The rules are simple. <laughs> the rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap. Spit, that is. Oh shit! Uh, Mikey, thank you for the 550 bits and the 500 bits. J Jason, chill. Meant to do this one. Got it. Got it. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, shit. But let's be clear. This ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic like.
Yes, romance is the goal, so we'll all be waiting here in complete silence, trying to listen and use our imaginations while you make out in the other side of on the other side of the bar, but not watching. <laughs> like adults, romantic, well-adjusted adults. Jason, you're up. You grip the bottle in your hand and put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Mini games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Uh, this this here upcoming minigame is a special minigame, perfect for less coordinated because there's no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to do, it's a bit like losing, but no one ha has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like me to repeat that? Ready. I still don't know what I'm doing, but ready. Away we go. Spin the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. Here we go. Oh, you got spirit. Hey, we got spirit. You two are meant to be. Psych, you actually have to spin multiple times uh, to get your real result. Uh, first to get to three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle on, on this here island. Now get your spin on. We had to do it three times. Oh, Trevor! Huh. Huntress! Oh, Wraith! We got a... Oh, yeah, we're just collecting them. We got Wraith again! We got Trapper again! Oh, we got Spirit again! We got Wraith! I think that's three. Wraith is your true match. Ooh! Just this morning, you were waking up on a strange be beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now you're looking across the beach, uh, across the beach towel at Wraith, lust in his eyes, sweat glistening on his skin. Daddy, chill. <sighs> ah. <laughs> Candy, thank you for the 500 bits. Your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Wraith takes you by the hand and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. He begins to reach for you, putting his hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but n but not in the sexy way he is. You're sweating in the gross way you'd sweat at an interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try and lock, li lock lips in this state, you might gross him out so completely that he'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Wraith, I, you, we. Look, um, you're great, but also terrifying. <laughs> Did he just steal your line? I want to be kissed by you, but well, I'm maybe not even sure how. Is that sad? Great, now, now, I, now I look sad. I'm well, if the tropical shorts fit. You, you make me happy to be around, I think. It's still so new, all of this. We can figure it out together. Aw. Right about to see why they call him Big Bang k rap Really? You'd... Really? I'd, I'd like to get to know you. And you know, the kissing thing sounds great, in, in theory. I'm sure it doesn't sound, um, painful? So then, for now, I, uh... Wraith reaches out and gives you a vigorous handshake. Oh my. We're acquaintances going on friends. Going on lovers? I'm sorry. Ugh. Great handshake, by the way. Really? Truly. I hate to break up such a passionate moment <laughs> that we only assume was passionate because we never spy on you constantly while you stay on the uh, this island. But dinner is being served right away, and we must insist that you join us. 
We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation when, the, uh, when there are so many more interesting things to die from. Oh. Seems like the next activity is mealtime? How quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious, fancy epic uh, like you find on cable. Dwight and Cla Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. Oh, and oh great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that uh, they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. Oh, to start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Okay. Is this going to be a puzzle? Oh, Trickster! Oh, yeah, Trickster's here. Surprised? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected stir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers. Uh, and my whole stick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good, Jason. Real good. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, not yet. I might do that later. Um. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit on a table <laughs> if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on uh, one side. The rest of them will sit opposite you. Okay. Huntress and Trapper can sit at ends with their enormous sexy arms. <laughs> now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. Uh, we hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that uh, we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which, you know, considering what you've been up to, who are you to get judgy now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts, and you need to murder something to eat, eat its meat. So that's Here, like technically true. I like party, finger bopping. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Jason, you thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of over overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fra uh, fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we literally, we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal! Wow, he's right for a change, cause, cause I am, <laughs> I am with my broad axe. It's a perfect tool for, uh, for easily chopping anything in Twain. First, oh. oh, first, who says Twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver, fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Ugh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough! Grow up! Ob uh, obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obs. The hell it is! Oh, I'll show you both my katana and 
and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop, please. I hate it when we fight or talk or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azarov. Great, instead of uh, slicing it up, you can club it to, to a second death. Hey, Jason, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to car carve up Felix. I mean dinner, not Felix. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. Uh, they once argued over who had the most effective weapons for, 70, for 72 straight hours. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When, they, when they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value and maintaining your tool, tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Mini games consist of two parts. On the top, a pointer which rotates in the... Oh, on the bottom, yeah. Press the space bar to stop the pointer or the target to win. Fail to land on target. Okay. I'm ready! Yeah! Perfect! 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 Ah! Oh, you missed completely! That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you, you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served. For real. Almost got... You know, that wasn't bad, right? The, sa the sounds, especially coming from the mask killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoveling food up, up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, she doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to be really embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean, come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think, mi you think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. All right. Let's catch up real quick. Uh, Pure Poisson, thank you so much for the new sub. Thank you so much. Cat Knight, thank you for the 500 bits. Thank you so much. Bree Blaster, thank you for the 17 months. I think I read that earlier, but just in case. And then Pop Pop! <laughs> Ugh. Thank you for the 16 month support. How is your journey uh, to being a K-pop stand at 40 going, Jace? I still am on this journey, and I, I, I'm taking a while. You know, we'll get there. Uh, Lullaby Spies, thank you for the nasty bits. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Jason. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. All right. Even if I wanted to eat, you have no idea what would actually follow. Oh, I have no idea what would actually follow. Fair. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Uh, do you see how deep this cut cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digest digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse, they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation why. What do you tell them? Actually, it's not the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be grossed out by dinner so I'd I'd have an excuse to not chew in front of everyone. Sorry. Sorry if that made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try to relax and not worry what everyone thinks. 
It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you. Right, guys? Is anyone listening to me? Typically a group that includes one, if not more cannibals staring at you with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now, uh, you're barely able to keep your head up, let alone get scared and run away. I'm a narrator, not a physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh, hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why, why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Oh, shit. Starting scenes uh, over and having to fast forward back where... <laughs> To where you were, am I right? <laughs> For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked. Some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make more choices that I like. Okay. You wake up to find spirit holding your limp body, uh, gingerly pouring cool water over your mouth. Don't you just love the ocean at night? I do. Staring out... Uh, over the vast darkness of the ocean really validates the feelings inside me that we're all truly insignificant and the only thing worth pursuing is revenge. I have to wonder, how could anyone believe anything else? You look out into the darkness of night and ponder her question. Well, it's a simple question. How could they? How could anyone not feel small and alone in the face of such massive nothingness? Oh... Maybe spirit's words, maybe the ocean, or maybe it's, it has always been this way, but you suddenly feel connected to spirit's words. I may not remember much about my life before, but there's one thing I know to be true. I've always been alone. And I always will be alone. Spirit has turned from looking at the ocean and is looking directly at you now. It's a funny idea, isn't it? Being alone. Together? Oh! It's the best we can hope for. Maybe. Or maybe it's too much to hope for. Maybe that it's impossible to pretend we know anything. Is that just arrogance? Oh, I was so dumb. So busy trying to please everyone and be the perfect student, the perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I didn't take care of myself. And now I'm all I've got. Worst of all, I got distracted from my true purpose. My destiny. The purpose that was sitting inside me uh, my whole life. Okay, so this might sound a bit silly, but Spirit looks around to see if there's anyone else on the beach. When she's convinced that it's only you two, she continues. There's a dragon that lives inside me. I've always known, but I've tried to ignore it. When I couldn't ignore it, I tried to push it down. I, I'm so stupid. You're not stupid. That sounds badass. Right? But I didn't let it out. And then I, you know, chop, chop. And now that dragon is is pretty uh, much a one-track revenge beast. But enough about me. What's inside of you, stranger? No dragon, just a lot of fire. Nothing but darkness. Oh my. I'd have to kill a dragon. I'd kill to have a dragon. Maybe not the best choice of one. I mean, a dragon sounds awesome. Honestly, though, I don't feel like I've got anything inside me all. Just darkness. Never-ending darkness. And here I thought uh, Spirit was the biggest goth on the island until you arrived. 
Perhaps I could light a torch and search through that darkness. Oh my. Oh my. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on, on this strange island. Only to find it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. Here we go. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick, uh, playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of uh, this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I, I was no time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go! Once everything is gathered at at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not gonna say who, so don't worry you, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. <laughs> That means we're behind on uh, we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story? But story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative-heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share it? How will we decide who? Oh, great. We have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Who, uh, Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize <laughs> this, is <prob> this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Sorry, everyone. I think uh, they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I, I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off me, which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule at even once? Damn it, Donna. If you try to flex that authority gimmick at uh, one more time, so help me. I'll snap your head off quick, and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and muss are back on. You two, uh, <laughs> you two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. Damn. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. <laughs> they switched his name to nobody. But we still got to get started on story time. So, Jason, who do you think should go? Ah, damn it. That's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Well, we would do spirit, right? I choose you, spirit. Whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? Really? You wanna hear from me? Spirit huffs and dramatically rolls her eyes as she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. Don't let her talk you out of it. She She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously dis disturbing, even to me. And I literally pulled a guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Oh. Talk, oh. Talk about bullshit stories. If everyone else is going to chit chat, I guess I, I can just sit down and Huntress's eyes go red uh, beneath her mask and both Trapper and Wraith take their seat. They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. Um, well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now, though. I was selected, so I'm going to tell my story. Galaxy Oracle, thank you for the 26 months! Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I call it the Prisoner's Kiss. Oh, shit. 
You notice that Huntress and Wraith are both uh, sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Uh, nobody offered you popcorn. It was a dark summer night. Uh, warm rain seeped uh, from the sky like blood from an from an old wound. Jeez. Detective Hada, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence unlike anything else she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep their curious onlookers away. But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of the busy market, had appeared a giant box, strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered, built on site? In, in such a busy area, how could something like this just appear? A mystery. It was as if it was conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. A huge box was very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit paused her story to look from face to face of each, of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me, cried someone inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped, imprisoned, his voice trembling. By now, if it, if every detective in the city was there, oh, by, by now it was if, if every detective in the city was there, looking this strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side, it didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is, except for a small, single slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man, as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hada comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time uh, for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety as the night dragged on with no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. But Detective Hada was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed uh, D Detective Hada. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together, and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through the narrowest part of the passageways, Detective Hada watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of the strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence uh, at the hopelessness of the moment. Promise, asked the man, promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised, I do. A simple pledge, she felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so, when this man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hada, for she knew he would return. And he did, pressing his lips up, up to the narrow slit in this horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, uh, steam flowing from his mouth. And as he asked, promise, promise that I'm not alone? Yes, promise, I do. And pressing her palms against the cold outside the box without truly knowing why, Detective Hada leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening, letting her uh, breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall, warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. Uh, she could feel in this brief contact uh, the beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, uh, matched beat for beat in, in this soft touch. Thank you, said the man, no trace of fear remaining in his voice. He backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. Get back, yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself in between uh, Detective Hada and the box, breaking the side breaking a silence that would soon be filled by a cacophony of wearing gears and clicking latches, a symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. Something had triggered as if uh, an unseen lever pulled and the side of the giant box began to slide open. Detective Hada gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the foggy interior of the giant box. Her feet splashed in the puddle of rainwater. Her heart was racing as she swept her light from side to side. And when her eyes landed on the man, or at least landed on what, what should have been him, there in the corner of the box was a pile of pieces, like parts of a doll, almost pulled apart or 
Perhaps that that's just how Detective Hada had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one of one another, clearly severed and placed in a neat little pile. And atop that pile, a head, cold, pale, eyes open, lips, and icy blue. Uh, Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression, lifeless, her lips blue, tears, tears fall from her chin and soak into her, uh, into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire, up at the sky, anywhere but at Spirit. It was you who chose her, you who initiated this harrowing tale, so sad, so creepy, so sensual. Uh, she really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail. And now no one knows. <laughs> and now no one is sure how to, uh, how to act. Uh, Dwight and Claudette stare, are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. This game was supposed to be lighthearted rom. Please, I said do something. Stand up and try one of the s slow caps. Say nothing. Hug her. Full cool story. Okay. Oh, You stand without saying anything, approach the spirit, reaching your arms around her for a hug. Her robe hovering in the air begins to wrap itself around you and squeeze you into her. It's kind of it's kind of like being hugged back, but also like being tied up. It's certainly not what you expected. Lizzie, what's up? <laughs> the Lex Files, thank you for the 29 months. Bap, boop, beep, boop. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward movement, and you nearly fall uh, over into the fire. Spirit says nothing and floats away without much as, as a goodbye. You, meanwhile, realize everyone had just watched this truly strange interaction from the corners of their eyes. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit, so they, all, they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves, and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? <laughs> What's up Trickster? Uh, he doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from uh, these guppies all day, but uh, I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. Oh my. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby! <laughs> Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going uh, to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. Ooh, Spirit's coming back. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around, I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted at, at that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day. Even when you're a god, I mean, a narrator. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. You should you should come to the hot tub with me. Uh-oh! Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her and offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. All right. You and your story fr uh, teller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story bo bore some similarities to my life, um, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, uh, not any other ickly. Uh, I believe you completely. Sure, you were cutting to pieces in your life, and so was the person in the story. A perfectly normal coincidence. 
sure, you're on this island, trapped, one might say, in a most puzzle in a most puzzling place. Also, a completely regular coincidence. And sure, his lips are blue, and your lips are blue. Really? You call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find. Revenge! Okay, so the similarities stop there, I guess. Coincidences. Sorry, the coincidences. Get this through your head, whoever you are. Samurai blood runs through my veins, or, well, maybe it has coagulated by now. No need to sweat the details. Regardless, I'm a descendant of noble warriors. Thousands of years of training with bladed weapons preceded, uh, preceded my entrance, entrance into this world. Do you know how many swords that is? A lot. You've got to figure that that with uh, ah, figure that with many sharp edges, a person is bound to get disconnected from a body part here and there. The truth is, and I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbing about it. I dreamt that story, like watching a movie in my sleep. When I was a little girl, years before my father sunk his blade into my skin. I've never been able to shake it. That's a very adult story for a t child to dream. Do you believe me? Yeah. I know we just met, but yes, I do believe you. The way you told that story, it clearly came from someplace deep. Fool! Who taught you to trust a stranger? You're going to get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. Now you've got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? And if I know everything, because trust me, I don't know everything. Don't I already know the answer to my own question about if I believe your answer to spirit's question? Whoa. Ocean air got me tripping. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us both. What's more important is that a certain corpsey cutie floating in a cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from uh, uh free free her from her puzzle box if you believe that she is the damn it got me going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what surely will be a mind-numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain two someone standing before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. Here we go again. Sorry, kids. But it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, however, love being wrapped, wrapped up in a fresh, clean towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young, and she'd comb out all of the tangles and tie a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch as Spirit stares off into the distance, uh, her hand gripping uh, into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. When she catches you looking, she turns away roughly grabs a towel from Dwight and then pushes him and Claudette aside as she floats off. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Spirit's story about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you, will you leave with your life or has it already been taken from you and it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery? Before you can dwell on uh, too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar, creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like uh, that lit by a firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, uh, but, we, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you to ease? Just try and keep the volume at a minimum, or our other uh, guests aren't types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Ready. What am I ready for? Away we go. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. Um, you examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial to fix it. Oh. Okay. Listen more. There we go. I kind of want to listen to all of them. DVD music. 
You don't hear it? It's very quiet, actually. Yeah, the music is very quiet. Yeah, this one's a little louder. All right, let's talk about our community. For us, it means uh, two major things. First of all, the community is you out there. It's you and everybody else, either playing the game or talking about the game or creating content relating to the game or being in the game, music or. Uh, I like that one. I think this is the one we want. Yep. You decide to ask uh, one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. <gasps> Who would you like to summon uh, to your side as you lay by the fire? It would be spirit, right? I was wondering if you, I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret fall asleep when she's feeling restless. I listen to flute music. Uh, dab on some essential oils and steam my pores. Really? What? Even the dead like to relax. I don't really have any of those things around. Oh? Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back though. And if you lose it, well, you'll get your revenge on me. <sighs> if it's the last thing I do. He finally starts uh, to feel sleepy, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. Uh, it shouldn't uh, still be as spooky by now. You've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that. Uh, even amnesiac video game protagonists. Well, well, guess what? Drink as much as you'd like. You'll never get to 100%. You hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. What am I up to? You awake suddenly see someone looming over you. Huntress is rifling through your pockets. Oh, you're awake. I wasn't stealing from you, merely trying to get to know you better to see what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with spirit before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but well, yes, I am saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't already have tied up. <laughs> so I was making sure they didn't do anything fishy. And I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know. While I've got you, uh, you should really consider spending some more time with me. I'm not scary. You're not? Not at all. I'm just a lost girl on a big island. I've been watching you since you got here, you know. Not in a creepy way. Huntress pauses for a long moment. All right. In a charmingly creepy way, I've noticed how fun-loving you seem. If you spend some time with me tomorrow, maybe I'll take you to this special place I've found. It's all mine. None of the other killers have been able to find me there. It's quiet and isolated. Maybe I'll even show you how to make beef stroganoff. That that all sounds very enticing. I'll let you get back to bed. It's been a long day. Shh. Huntress places a gigantic hand on your forehead as your eyes flutter closed. Finally alone, for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned.
wait a second, where are we? This isn't, oh geez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to the camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. Uh, I eat an all organic do uh, diet of raw deer, bear, and human. I'm fit as a fiddle. And that being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. There's always some time to turn things around. Like that one time I spent a day of day and night searching for food in vain. Only to return to my cabin spent and starving to find a family of squirrels nesting in my chimney. They were delicious! If I'm being honest, I just want to kill about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Even the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time. Before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like to, them to continue living. For now. One false step in. <laughs> well, you know, everyone calls me the Trapper for a reason. And they better call me Trapper. I swear, if I watch this later, and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the Chiron guy. I'm not really sure how, I, how to feel about this, about Jason. On one hand, everyone I've cared about has met an awful fate, so it's probably good for Jason if they just keep ignoring me. On the other hand, there's something about them uh, that maybe could work out for my plan, or for me. I know that everyone thinks of me as beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. The circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay. Those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on society that has used me to uh, and uh, throw me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. All right. Open your eyes, the sun is shining. Um, there is not a cloud in the sky and you feel great, totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You are, you're, you really are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Uh, speaking of weirdos, uh, I see the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare, uh, just yet though. At least they make for a sexy bunch, no? And talk about sexy. Here comes Trickster, <laughs> carrying coffee. <laughs> I love this. Morning, beautiful. I thought you might like a nice cup of joe to start this incredible uh, day off, right? Whoa! Trickster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious uh, behind his joyful demeanor, though. Everyone knows musicians are morning people. I also want to wish you luck. Today is an important one. My only regret is that I won't be a bigger part of it. Uh, budgeting issues. <laughs> Also, I am just swamped with engagements, especially on the other island. <laughs> Trickster winks at you. Uh, if you want to ask him how to reach the other island, now is the time. Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought me a cup of... No, wait, don't drink that. What the hell was that? They don't call him Trickster because he's good on a skateboard. And he definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That almost... That almost certainly not coffee, and I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you. Yet. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise. Uh, the type of place that gives you... The, a place you give a 5 of 5, 10 of 10, 2 thumbs up review to. Not internal prison of pain. And please make sure to leave a review. It really helps with the algorithms. Uh, just trust me. I'm looking out for you. So can we please move on? Hey, wait a second. How do we possibly... Uh, how did a possibly omni uh, omniscient, uh, possibly unreliable narrator, narrator physically just knock that coffee out of your hand? This is not parliament, uh, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of turn at this moment. 
I need no recognition, for I am the ocean. I dominate the land, I submerge those who defy me, and I become their watery grave. Actually, speaking of graves, I would like to say something. Something of grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an eternal prison of pain, and I'm not saying it is, even a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 of 5, 10 of 10, thumbs up review. Uh, if it was crafted with love and or that's the type of thing you're into. You know, the ocean is right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent. And whatever and whenever possible, start uh, from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean vacations, is not easy to do. Sometimes there are small bugs and or inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection is overrated. The universe is filled with mysteries. Uh, we ought to celebrate those who venture to bear their souls as part of the creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment, not to be overly critical of them. Are you two trying to sell me on this place actually being good? You don't have to say it like that, especially after I saved you from, the, from that poorly made cup of coffee. Sorry, we should have been here five minutes ago. Uh, they always do this on the second morning. Sad, really. Even if they do make some great points. Oh, sure. They make great points. I agree. Can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies, Jason. Uh, the last few minutes aside, have you been enjoying your time here on the island? I'm suspicious. Wait, yes. I'm suspicious that there's no... Yes, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not at all suspicious that there's no, no option here. What an encouraging response, and we're so glad that you're not suspicious. Hey, Claudette, maybe Jason isn't suspicious because they figured out why they're actually doing what they're actually doing here. Zero chance. They're still clicking, even right now, uh, to see how you'll respond. Hey, look at that. Yeah, they don't know anything. It doesn't matter, th though, Jason. We're so happy to hear you're having fun. I didn't say I was having fun. We're all having fun, Jason. Do you hear us? We're all having fun. Uh. We do need to ask you one more question, though. We all had to sign away our rights uh, to say anything negative about this place. Would you please sign this non-disparagement agreement? Yes. Yes, I hereby agree to participate in a verbal contract stating that I, Jason, will never say anything negative about my stay here on the island. Perfect! Delightful! Excellent. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> We're having fun here. Hey, Jason, it's still totally cool if you have constructive feedback. This place, uh, the place to leave that is in a positive review because we all know that nobody reads negative re reviews of games <sighs> or our resorts like this. <laughs> anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone into a trance. Uh, and with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that mean that can only mean one thing. Breakfast. Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes, bacon, and so much for maintaining these beach bods. Uh, we're all half naked in the tropical paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? Yogurt magic powers will only get you so far. Even killers watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all in one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. It looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper stands up to talk about how his day went in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to survive yesterday, so congrats, I guess. Whether you survive today, is 50-50 at best. Good luck? Well, that was bizarre. Back to your bre- Nope. Now Hunter steps up to talk about her feelings. This island is treacherous. I don't know what a newcomer thinks they are doing here, but it certainly isn't helping any of us. Oh. Whoa, Huntress pretends to be all independent, but she- But is she secretly kind of miffed that you aren't- You and her aren't getting along? Ah, well, that- That surely must be it. Um, no one else would weirdly stand up during breakfast too. And just like that, here comes spirit. Did everyone sleep well? I did, or should I say I did not. I haven't slept in 20 years on account of the whole burning 
uh, quest for familial uh, revenge thing. And last night was no different. So in case that was exactly how it should be. Uh, got a lot of reading done though. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back quietly, resenting being trapped here with you all while looking cute doing so. Guessing uh, Wraith had enough, <laughs> has had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, perfect, there he is. Take us home, Wraith. I'm glad the introduction of JSOM to our island paradise uh, and yeah, it was in quotations. Didn't distract me from my normal routine, ignoring all of you and vice versa. This place is an eternal prison of suspicion and suffering and no one cares. I'm still the only one asking any questions. I'm asking a question too. It's, when will Wraith shut up? And now they're all looking at you expectantly. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how yesterday made you feel? Uh, I think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. Keep them wanting more. You're getting good at this game, or er, uh, sexy true to life experience. Shame you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. Still haven't eaten it. After breakfast, you head to the hot tub uh, by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. But before you get there though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing, me? Well, yeah, I guess. Is that okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing a relationship with one of these fi four fine killers, but it feels like a person I'm getting to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you, you've you lost your mind seeing how I'm not a real, how, how I'm not real and all. Yeah, I heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick it there. A little more, a little more. Oh yeah, that's it, yes. All right. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Yeah, that feels right. This this is uncomfortable. Now I want you to take that and put put it right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that. Exactly like that. I swear I had no idea these two even do uh whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something so they know you're close by and hear everything. Uh, oh wow, look at this super cool bottle of Trickster Brand suntan lotion someone left on a chair. Anyone know where I can buy some? Damn it! Oh, come on, a little privacy please. Dwight is panting and Claudette has a crazy look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here and, and that I could hear you. Well, you know. Know what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but it sounded like, uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day and we spend it hoping if we stab each other in just the right spot, we won't get resur resurrected. I've come to believe that the key to finding the exact place uh, we need to bleed out from, and I believe that place is our appendix. Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Uh, did you actually think we were me and him, Dwight? <laughs> uh, you don't have to laugh that hard. They get it. <laughs> My life is a nightmare, and yet somehow it's never been worse than right now. Let's go, lover boy. Oh! Okay, uh, Car Kirby, thank you so much for the dollar tip. This game is gold. It's it's fun. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry wounds and our five minutes is up uh, anyway. Good luck, JSOB. You're going to need it. Going to need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, please make sure your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A cremedy. Shut up. I like it. Anyway, where where were we? Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't read that. Whoops. But you're dedicated to achieving true-centered self self come No drama, no bullshit. Just soaking up the sun and heat a pool. Today you're I'll on a date a with hey, you. I, I like party, finger bopping. Welcome to the wild ones. Emily, thank you for the new sub. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who would who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing thought, all is going to plan until a shadow blocks your precious sun. 
spiky tip like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. But no, it's not a tree at all. Hey, babe. <laughs> Breakfast was weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling. What's that about? Uh, some forest kind of check-in with the group. I don't like it. Fishy, kind of lazy. Mel, thank you for the 57 bucks, 57? Wow, I didn't know you were that old yet. Damn, you know, I'm old. <laughs> Whatever though, breakfast is dub. Uh, no one should get to eat before noon or after 4 p.m. Yeah, I do intermittent, intermittent fasting. You thank see my you abs, so by the way? The Emily, gift. thank you also for the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe you can see them later at my private stage on the other island, you know, IP Island, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out. If you play your cards right, I could give you a private show. Boop, boop. Moj Ray, thank you for the 100 bits, Jason. I just want to thank you and your community. The past two months have been super hard for me uh, since losing my dog, but having most nights to spend with you and the wild ones has made it uh, so much less lonely and quiet. So thank you all. I got some amazing news today. In seven short weeks, I will be getting a new golden retriever puppy named Wool, and I can't wait. Ah, bap! That was a good bap. You can't say it. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm glad you've been here though for the vibes. Catch you around. So Trickster's gonna give us a private show. That's all I got out of this. His abs are pretty amazing. You gotta give him that. And a blow up bat? Uh, threatening but adorable. Uh, makes for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. He's a psychopath, uh, just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything. And we're not, and we're not best friends. Uh, just because we had a little talk about doing a little talking. It's not an open t invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. Okay, now that that guy is gone and we've got some ground rules established that we're definitely going to abide by, it's time to lay back, taking some deep, slow breaths, and nope, another shadow. These people will not leave you alone. Now let's see who it is this time. Oh, it's Spirit. That checks out. You two have gotten pretty cozy. We should get out of here. I know a place that brings a bit of welcome darkness to this tropical nightmare. Best of all, uh, I'm the only one that seems to know about it, so we won't be bothered there. I don't even know why I'm telling you, really. It's my private spot, but I guess I've got a feeling that you'll appreciate it in the way that I do. Not like these other killers. They don't get me. But I'll get them. Oh, I'll get them. And I'll get my father, too. And I'll punish him for what he did to my mother and me. Spirit radiates a uh, menacing aura, waving her sword around the air as she threatens, well, the entire universe. It's scary and more than a little hot. It, uh, more than a little hot if you get turned on by menacing. Look, all this time on Murderer's Island has got us both a little confused about things. I'm choosing to lean into it. I'd suggest you do the same. You've seen her get mad, which is probably enough to scare you into compliance, but you've also seen that there's a more sensitive side hiding within her. Which one do you think will win it out? You consider her offer, but before you can decide if you want to go off with spirit, the trapper interjects. I demand that you reconsider. Actually, I strongly, strongly suggest it, especially if you're choosing between me, a walking mountain with a rich ore of gold running through it, and a literal wisp of air. Literally air. What's that? Yeah. Where? Can you get them out? Uh. Well, thank you. I'm playing a dating simulator. Yeah, but it's a game and I have to read a lot, Gabs. <laughs> Gabs is like, you're married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so funny, Gabs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
The gas came out, so I I ate some of her. So we get chips and like we like different chips. And Gabs had her chips and I opened them last night, not knowing that I apparently just didn't see it right in front of my face that there was an unopened bag of my chips there. So Gabs was like, you ate my chips when you have an unopened bag? And I was like, what? Where? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Literally air. Spirit is held together by air. I wouldn't put my faith in anyone who can be defeated by a strong breeze. Tough choice. You weigh your options quickly because uh, you can only go on one date today and you also don't want to be hacked into pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember that these are all cold-blooded killers, but if you know what they say, uh, but you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And then die a horrible, retching, writhing death after drinking it because the, the lemons are poisoned all along. Sorry, this island really got me tilted. Who will it be? I don't understand this game. See, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. But this won't kill me, will it? So I'm gonna go with Spirit. I I gotta go with Spirit. You made the correct decision, but know this, just because you pick me doesn't mean I'm going to slobber all over you like a dog, understand? Well, of course, I... You've still got a lot to prove to me. I want to believe that our connection is real, but I've been hurt before, literally with a katana. A katana that I now wield in spectral form. You feel me? Because when you feel me, if you try any of those macho <laughs> that macho trapper crap. Yeah, I feel you. Before you ask Claudette and D Dwight to clarify, I'll let you know that yes, it's too late to change your answer now. All right. You and Spear arrive at the coast overlooking the Black Lighthouse. Uh, it's old and decrepit, but still impressive. There's something magnetic about it. You can see why Spirit uh, would be drawn to such a place. You, uh, you look Spear up and down and notice that she's wearing all black, just like the lighthouse. I'm noticing a bit of a theme. Is black your favorite color? Black isn't really a color at all. It's an absence of color. It's a void. Like me. Spirit smiles. Uh, nature abhors a vacuum. You're not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The lapping waves on the shore of the coast set a romantic tone. The fog, the fog that surrounds Spirit everywhere she goes, everywhere she goes, blends perfectly with the mist rolling up the rocky shoreline. She's at, she's at one with this place, and so are you. Uh, the peace doesn't last too long, however, as the lighthouse lets out an eerie howl like a monster dying. A spiraling black light stretches out across the sky. Oh, jeez. The spirit has to yell at you just to be heard. Oh, yeah! It does that! <laughs> the light and sound recede, uh, and the two of you sit in silence. The spirit lays a towel down and then pats, uh, uh, pats on it gently. Uh, she... Clearly, she wants your company, so you oblige. Let's go. When you do, uh, she takes out some sunscreen and hands it to you. You're not exactly sure what to do. Is this an invitation to get a little hands-on action? What else could it be? Uh, thanks. Now we're talking. No thanks. I'm going to say no thanks. No thanks, I'm good. I might have lost my faith in humanity a long time ago and vowed never to care about what other person thinks of me, but nobody wants to get wrinkles, even me. Suit yourself. Ah, shit! Is that a bad decision? You watch a spirit apply sunscreen to herself in the most unique way by uh, floating her own hand around her back to spread it on. Comment on her hands, her floating hands ability. Say nothing. Ask about the shards of glass sticking out from her. Let's do the glass. 
So, if you don't mind, what's the deal with all those shards of glass sticking out from all over your body? You really want to know? You're not creeped out by them? Oh, I think that's a good answer. Woo! Woo! You're not creeped out, just nervous because you know the answer might be very personal, but she's a person that you want to get to know. Uh, I was just thinking about what you must have gone through to end up like that. Uh, it had to have been horrible. Uh, it was worse than death. At least death ends eventually. But I wouldn't want to forget it. It literally made me who I am right now. Truth is, uh, I could pull all of these bits of glass that are stuck in my flesh out right now if I wanted to. But I don't want to. Each shard is a reminder of what my father did to me and what the world did to him. That's why I refuse to play the universe's game. I hate the idea that I'll be forced to succumb to pressure the way he did in the end. Shit. Uh, the way that fear and anger filled him up and uh, then came bursting out. The way his misery flooded our home and drowned us all. Yeesh. It's hard not to think about revenge, the dragon inside me. Uh, it's doing to me what the world did to him. I have to fight it, even though it gives me strength. I must maintain control. You're stronger than he ever was. I'm sure of it. I appreciate that, Jason. I suppose a little help isn't a bad thing. In life, in love. This world is a lot to endure alone. Maybe I could use a little assistance reaching my delicate toes for a bit of lotion, you know. Having your body contorted into these vengeful poses. It really does a number on my joints. Oh my god. It rubs the lotion on its skin. <laughs> oh. Oh shit. This is a mini game. Got it. Perfect. Oh shit. Oh, not bad. Perfect. Not bad. All right. Well, I suppose that lotion made it to where it was supposed to be going eventually. Oh, jeez. And you weren't too incredibly wasteful. I'm not a woman who believes in, in rushing through things just to get them done. If there is a next time, I'm sure you'll do even better. You look up at the lighthouse. Uh, it's ominous dark form hovering above this moment between spirit and yourself. Evil, as it clearly is in this case, uh, it does you a solid by blurting out another ominous moan and burst of black light that rescues you from this awkward silence. Oh. From seemingly out of nowhere, an ancient looking ship appears in the water. It glows, itself a thing of death, a spirit of a ship that once sailed these seas centuries ago. A tattered black flag whips in the ocean uh, air above the ship as it careens toward the shore. Before crashing onto the rocks, it must have been drawn in by the lighthouse. You hear a distant shouting of sailors as, a, uh, as the old wooden ghost ship breaks up and sinks into the water. Uh, Maddie Caddy, thank you for the 21 months. I can officially drink now. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you for the 21 months. Oh, right. It does that sometimes, too. Should we, uh, do something? Nah, the sharks will take care of it. Within a minute, the ocean is quiet again except for the waves. Note to self, hungry sharks. But these time-traveling pirates, or whoever they were, uh, you're half sure you saw one of those skull, uh, skull and crossbones flags, aren't the only ones drawn here today. It's Wraith! He has emerged from the palm trees behind you. Oh, shit. I didn't come here to break up your date or something. I came here for that. Wraith points to the lighthouse. It's indifferent. It is indifferent to his attention. I've been seeing it in my dreams, shining its strange light on me. I can't avoid it through the woods and walls. Nothing seems to stop it from reaching out to me. Duh, it's haunted lighthouse. It does that to everyone at some point. You're no more special than me. Those dead pirates or that mermaid I saw washed up on the shore that one time. Ew. Mermaids, by the way, aren't even close to as beautiful in person as they are in the movies. Uh, more sea witch than underwater princess if you get my if you get my drift. It's all part of a vast conspiracy, uh, an epic river of lies that runs beneath the island or something. I'm pretty sure I've figured it out. The basics, anyhow. If you come with me, I can 
You can get cut! Spirit waves her katana, nearly trimming a couple of buttons off Wraith's tropical top. He takes the hint and backs uh, away a few steps sl slowly. For the quiet guy, he really never shuts up. Uh, okay, be that way. You'll see. Alone at last, tension broken, death deathly moans quiet, and Wraith vanishes back to wherever he hangs out. You scooch closer to the spirit, breathing in uh, the damp, foggy air that seems to emanate from her. Uh, it's not quite clear how the whole fog thing works, but you don't even care. You're feeling this moment. Spirit seems to be feeling it, too. She starts to adjust her robe, and you get a peek at the bathing suit beneath. Oh! I wish you, wish you, it was a fish. Thank you for the 11 months support. Almost one year. 11 months hanging out with all of you. A closing date for my first house. Oh, shit. And a DVD daring dating sim. A very great day. It's pretty wild. Mackenzie, thank you for the 13 months support. What a game to celebrate 13 months. I don't know what the aim of the game is, but whatever it is, they sure did it. They did it. Okay. The spirit seems uh, feeling it, too. She starts to adjust her ribbon. You get a peek at the bathing suit beneath. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay. For someone who seems intent on approving how little she cares about what everyone else thinks, she puts a lot of work into getting into that soup. It's got straps for days. Oh, shit. However, you're so focused on what's happening with spirit, you don't see the next interruption coming. And Claudette and Dwight burst in on you and interrupt whatever you were doing. It doesn't seem like they were worried they'd bump into much. We're here to make a very dramatic announcement. Well, technically, we're here to invite you to join us back at the beach. Uh, we will be making a very dramatic... Where we will be making a very dramatic announcement. Uh, it's hard to... It's hard being the producers and the host. Aren't survivors supposed to work in groups of four? Oh. When you arrive at the beach, you realize you were set up. Despite uh, promising an announcement, Dwight and Claudette simply stand quietly. This isn't at all what was promised. Wait a minute. There's no announcement here. But there is a me. You got mud in your ears, friend. I told you to get lost. Don't you see? Lost is what I am, and so are you. But I know the way out. I've got, I've got a map back in my secret lair, literally and figuratively. Yeah, I know the difference. That's why you should ditch spirit and come spend the rest of the night with me instead. You've got a secret lair. Damn it! Who said anything about a secret lair? I said I've got, um, sap. Sap in my secret hair. And in, uh, there's a flap. There's a flap. On my secret chair. Don't change the subject. Don't ask me what he's talking about. You're trying to make a mess of the first nice day I've had in I don't know how long because it's not even clear what a year is. But in a while. I'm not about to be ditched for the likes of you. Uh, it's not me messing things up. Like... Uh, like I uh, keep trying to tell you, it's this dang island. I've come to accept a difficult truth. What's happening here? Well, I'm convinced that it's our fate. It's not anyone's decision. It's simply the way it will be. There's no use fighting it. What would you even know about fighting? All you do, all you know is hiding in your spooky little secret hair and crying like a baby while ringing your little bell. <laughs> so don't tell me what I, I can and can't fight back against. I was born a fighter. A dragon lives inside me. I can't not fight. Uh, even when all when all I might want to do is hide. Don't you don't you see this giant hat? It's a metaphor. Uh, if I do have a fate, my fate is to win every fight that comes my way. Got it? Folks. Oh, you hide. I've seen you hide. You do your little your little phase walking routine. Uh, what do you call that? It's basically cloaking. And we all know that cloaking is a type of hiding. Folks, uh, you cloak, I don't cloak. I'm not a cloaker. I phase walk out in the open. You just can't see me. You have no idea what they're talking about, but this sure sounds like some video game community forum thread. <laughs> if, if there ever was such a thing, not that you know about that either. <laughs> It sure doesn't seem like Dwight and Claudette are going to stop this, so it's on you. Ahem. I think I was I was brought here to make this choice, so I'm going to do that now. And I choose easy. When it comes down to it, neither of those uh, two seem easy to love. I mean, damn, Spirit uh, has broken glass shards sticking out of her, but she has a certain charm to her gloom. 
Spirit and I were actually having a nice time. Besides, it's my it's my fate to end up on this island. Well, hell with fate, fate really. And I don't take and don't take this the wrong way, Wraith, but the amount of awkwardness you pack into a single day, no wonder you're so skinny. Why am I so mean now? All the second guessing yourself must burn a lot of calories. No offense taken. It's yeah, okay, it's true. I can be a little awkward, I guess, sometimes. Right, so I'm going to stick with spirit. Oh, to honor! Thank you for the raid! Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Spirit breathes a sigh of relief. I've got enough revenging to do with that, without having to kill you and Wraith, too. All right. How was DBD? Spirit walks with you around the corner to show you something that she discovered in this place and knew it was meant to be connected with her with her journey. Journey, a cherry tree. It's just a small sapling, but it has begun to sprout flowers. It doesn't make sense to see a cherry tree here in this place. It also doesn't make sense to see a ghost in the in a black bathing suit, so you just accept it. As Spirit steps up to the tree, a cold breeze pulls some petals uh, off and they come cascading through the air around both of you. Oh, shit. Do you know the meaning of the cherry blossom? They're beautiful, also quite symbolic. Of course, like all good symbols, their meaning is pretty complicated. What do they mean to you? For many people, being among cherry blo blossoms is like being at a celebration of life. People travel great distances just to be near their vibrant beauty. However, as beautiful as they might be, they aren't magical. Uh, they're simply flowers. They quickly die and fade away. And for this reason, they are also a symbol of fleeting nature of life and our fragile mortality. In a way, it's the specter of looming death that calls our attention uh, to this special moment to see and appreciate life. How does a duality make you feel, Jason? Frustrated. As you look at the tree and consider Spirit's question, you reflect on your own current predicament stranded here. Uh, no understanding of why, no control. The beauty of this island, uh, the attention of such an interesting companion, it should bring you joy, but it comes to the price of being completely confused and hopeless. You look down and see a crumbling cherry blossom on the ground at your feet. As you stare at it, something begins to rage inside you, like a dragon. How can anyone find comfort even for a moment with death and decay looming on the horizon? It, yeah, it makes me so frustrated. It makes me so mad. I want to do something about it. I want to strike back against this shitty reality. Spirit lets you go off, staying calm despite your bubbling rage. She must have, she must know thoughts like this. Is that why she asked you? So that you'd see things from her point of view? I want to be alive! You feel connected to her uh, at this moment more than you have at any point before. You wonder, does she feel the same? Once the fallen cherry blossoms represented the souls of samurai warriors, uh, those with noble characters, those who did not fear death, uh, and those who, those who were killed in the greatest sacrifice to honor their emperor. Their lives are short, but their purpose uh, gave them beauty. Those warriors saw death coming, but ne they never dis despaired. They stood and faced it. They held their swords and struck down their fear. Whew! But despite uh, the samurai spirit that lives on in me, it, in my noble bloodline, my life has ended, but my death continues to stretch on. The cycle is frozen. This cherry tree, it's not real. Though its petals fall, they'll soon replenish, as if it were installed here by someone. Ooh. You watch as spirit chooses her words very carefully. By something with no respect for balance of life and death. Hey, yo! We're sorry to interrupt! Oh fuck, they're back! You know we won't we we don't believe you, right? Yup. Uh but this time we've got a really good reason. And this has nothing to do with us being manipulated by an unseen force, because that's definitely not happening. Nobody accused you of that, but okay. We're just here to tell you that it's time for dinner, silly. Get it while it's hot! I guess it's time to go, or whatever. Thanks for spending time with me today. I enjoyed it. Me too. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining, and that's not just remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no. You are feeling this 
this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep I'll, I'll keep your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing. It's time to get back to business. All the ahem, appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. Trickster's back! No! Oh, Wraith is, <laughs> Wraith is here too, yeah. We're not going to do the gag where we cram them all on screen at the same time again. So just believe me, they're all here and they're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. Uh, with, with your love on the line, everyone is being very careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. Uh, congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm as surprised as you are uh, uh, that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just met them yesterday. However, since Wraith seems to be like, uh, like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your heart, he throws caution to the wind and speaks up. Uh, it's pretty... It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderer's Island. But hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is is the least we can do. Uh, and heaven knows they won't do any better than that. I'm sick of watching every, uh, everyone else gorge themselves while I'm preoccup preoccupied with, you know, trying to get to the bottom of this never-ending nightmare. So tonight, none of that. I'm not really hungry anyway, so I say we just do a simple salad or something. The green kind, not the mayo kind. Mayo is gross. I'm fine with just lettuce. It doesn't have to be fancy. Not iceberg though. It has no nutritional value. Jeez. <laughs> Letting Wraith choose was a mistake. That's on all of us. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers um, would like to know about your day. Would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day for sure, but how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or or too little, it could affect your standing with the group. Okay, but just don't sit there and say nothing. Nothing isn't an option. Be coy. Gush about your date. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna be coy. Holy shit, it's been two years. Raise your glass for all the tears. Your awesomeness can't be outdone because you are a wild one. Aquarius, the lesson that you were the two years. 24 months, I must be hooked on this stream. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for the two years support. It wasn't really a date, more like two people avoiding everyone else and choosing to be alone, but doing it in a relatively close proximity to each other. Oh shit, I did it again. That's exactly right. Could it, uh, couldn't have not said anything of value better myself. Yes! Yes! Spirit is clearly happy with the way you portrayed your date. No surprise, she doesn't like people getting into her business. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now, and they're all very tired. Oh wait, no, sorry. That's a dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica, not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. Uh, Boney Appetit. Wait, we have a birthday? Maple Blondie, Headless Chicken Girl. Yeah! Ha happy freaking birthday! Happy birthday! Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna be a beer real quick. I'm gonna make another drink, then we'll keep going. Beer beer.
Oh, hey. D did everyone else take a little break too? I hope so. I hope so. All right, are we ready? Whew. Let's get back to it. Jim is turning him. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Let me romance a killer first. Did you mean but Come on, you know what they meant, Jason. No, almost everything we serve has lots of bones in it, even the vegetables. Corn! Impossible to avoid on this island. Everyone eats without speaking. Tensions are rising, both of sexual and deadly variety. Oh, oh my. Uh, when everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudette come back to clean up the table. They linger around you as they pick up your plate, take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? <laughs> They're annoying me. We're gonna ignore them. Is there anything else we can do for you? Anything at all? Anything? A manners book, perhaps? It's fine. We're used to this kind of shabby treatment here on Jerk Island. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, we've been told something big is going to happen, something that will change everything. You can willingly, uh, you can you can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. Do you have a choice on how you said that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately re regret how I did. Good, something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth! Fire illuminates the soul! I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I have a, I have pretty sensitive eyes. I'm also horribly afraid of it. The fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma involving fire. And finally, everyone starts moving toward the fire pit. If only uh, to get away from the race complaining. <laughs> fire pit! You take a seat com uh, on a comfortable log, uh, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for uh, the other killers to take their places, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think? Are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? It doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but saw something unexpected happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. Something almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably a great sign. Not a great sign. Hey, killers. Oh, cool. And now everyone is looking at you. So, you know, do something. Uh, should I pick someone to tell a story, or should we play charades? Boggle? Um, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Wraith points uh, his spine and skull staff thingamajig at you. You duck out of its way. Uh, who knows what that thing can do? Probably shoots lasers. Try not to bore us. We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Oh, jeez. Now you can't tell if you're warm from fire or if it's your nerves heating up. I know that the fire is right here, but maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Uh, Jason was just about to make an important decision about telling a story or not. Fine, I'll tell a story. Sure, I'm game to tell a story. Oh, here we go! <laughs> I hope it's a mystery. Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? Romance. I'll tell a romantic story. About two lovers take poison together and die from foaming at the mouth? Or... Or about two strong hunters who meet? Uh, when they both try to bludgeon the same wily wolverine? Not quite. It's about my parents. They met at a party in college. He was hosting. She'd been dragged there by some friends. 
they couldn't have been more different. And yet, as the night went on, they were drawn to each other. She made fun of his taste in music, and he took interest in her major, women's studies. They were married within two months. Bit soon to know if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet. Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them. If you know, you know. Some people don't need years to get acquainted with their partner. Uh, love could spark from a mere look across the campfire. Oh. Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across their fire pit. Oh, jeez. Except for Trickster, uh, who has wandered over to the bar and is loudly playing his own music on his headphones to drown you out. Well, why don't, can't they, listen, I know we can only pick one, but why can't, like, why can't we be like, hey, why don't we all go somewhere? That's not the game. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it actually was quite bad. Sorry, but this narrator keeps it real. We can't just end it here. So who else would you like to hear a story from tonight? You look from killer to killer, trying to decide who might be the most entertaining. We're going Huntress, y'all. Huntress, you seem raring to go. Let's hear from you. Sure thing! My neck of the woods isn't uh, wanting for uh, horrifying uh, mythology. Mother once told me a story of a young man who was traveling back home after the war. Which war? Doesn't matter. I just wanted some backstory details to paint a picture. I'll paint you a picture if you want. From blood! The man was lost and running out of food rations. He stopped to rest for a night underneath a majestic birch tree. That's when he saw he saw the women, naked, skin glistening in the twilight glow. Hot. I'm invested. Oh, trickster. They sang a haunting melody as they made their way downhill towards uh, the inviting lake. Enchanted by the music, the young man followed the parade of beautiful women until they stopped in a clearing next to the water. They turned to him and smiled. One woman with uh, long red hair stepped forward and reached for his hand. The others began to play music. Flutes, lutes, tambourines. The melody was intoxicating. The man's feet began to move beneath him. He was dancing, moved by the magical music of this mysterious woman. Of these mysterious women. Uh, twilight darkened into the night and the man grew weary. But when he tried to still his moving feet, he found that he could not help. I cannot stop dancing, he cried to the nearest woman, a slender woman with green hair. She drew near him and he saw her features distort into something horrific. She was bloated, an eye hanging from one socket, skin colored, uh, skin the color of algae, a rusalka, a rusalka, rusalka, uh, her true self. Uh, you'll never stop dancing, she, she screeched at him. My sisters and I were drowned in this lake by men of your regiment. Uh, consider this your punishment. The man cried out, but it wasn't me. Someone must pay, the Rusalka said, uh, her voice filled with uh, briny malice. And so the man danced and danced until his bones broke and his heart gave out. The dance of death. A silent beat as everyone takes uh, in this macabre ending. Uh, but it's not all bad. Rusalkas are also fertility goddesses. If a lady had stumbled across them, she would have blessed them, uh, blessed with a fruitful womb and probably some candy for the road. Damn, does that really, does she really think that's a happy ending? I want what Huntress is having. Oh, here they are again. How was story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think, uh, every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think that it, uh, it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm much more of a fan of episodic style of storytelling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Knowing it's a series takes a lot of pressure off any individual installment. It builds a greater sense of community between the audience and creator. Tell me, Jason, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Don't answer that. We actually don't care. We're uh, we're just here to make sure that we seam seamlessly move on to the next segment of the evening.
God forbid my small talk uh, get in the way of a romantic twilight moment. That's why I'm gonna need you to shut your yap trap. Uh, you know that we. You know what we need to get back to? That thing when we do. We, whenever we're not on screen. Okay, okay. You have fun tonight and try not to wink, wink. End up dead. Why did you say the words wink, wink out loud? Uh, and what kind of double, uh, double entendre are you getting at with the end up dead thing? So I is physically incapable of winking, not since the accident. And do do and you do know that all of these people are despicable, despicable criminals with a double digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit, she really doesn't belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. No wonder she's pissed. Did I hear somebody trash talking spirit? Deal me in. What do you say we take this top to the hot tub so I can soak this bod while I roast that ghost with some killer hot takes? Please, enough, enough talk of burns, uh, things that are lit or getting blazed. It's enough that these activities uh, have to be set next to a literal fire. Must I be surrounded with a by figurative flames as well? What if we turned and ran as far as we uh, away as we could from this place? Ah, for this place as we could, just you and me. Jeez, on those spindly legs, you probably tired before you got too far. If it's running away to some place more secluded, Jason was after. They they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. Not that my walk speed really ref reflects my giant stature, uh, but that's just because I choose to move slowly for stealthy reasons. It's my own choice and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? I'm so over that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so corporations can swoop in and sell you fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. I'll be sitting in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while tumbling uh, by, while thumbing through a public uh, domain novella printed on recycled paper because I refuse to pay, play their game anymore. It's like she... Oh. It's like she's actively trying to be as unappealing as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on or just me? Despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention, along with the attention of everyone else, is still on you for the moment. If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us. Maybe we could all move along with our lives or, um, you know, some special projects we might have going. You heard him. Who will it be? Which will you head off with for an evening activity? I'm just saying, uh, you might not get a ton of chances to date around like this before your time on Murder's I Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either. But, but with this streaming reality TV dating show boom happening, it's really pretty much all that wasn't taken. Which killer will you pick? And yes, we're back to excluding Trickster because, uh, that guy. We're gonna go with Huntress this time, y'all. We're going with Huntress! Right? Is that the move? Huntress? You know, I had a feeling you'd pick me. You've got good taste. Uh, and I don't just say that because I'm considering eating you. What the shit? Huntress licks her lips and she eyes you up and down. You've never felt like a literal piece of meat this much in your life before. What have you gotten yourself into? Let's go over to the bar. I'm going to make you into something special. Am I going to die? Uh, you and Huntress whisk yourselves away to the bar, and when you arrive, you find an arrangement of arts and crafts supplies? And those are taxidermy tools? Cool, cool, cool. Are you freaking out? I'm not freaking out. You wonder what's going on through Huntress's head. Though she's bubbly and enthusiastic, you're always terrified she might snap. Something on your mind? She smiles. Drink this! Oh, God. That does look good. Huntress hands you a seemingly normal tropical cocktail. Uh, if one were to drug you into some sort of state uh, in which you could op be operated on, these flavors would certainly hide the poison. 
You look around and consider what else there is to live for besides becoming Huntress's little toy. And the conclusion is, bombs away. You pound the drink. It's quite nice. I've been thinking about making you a present, a mask. Would you be into that? Yes, of course. I, I've always admired yours. What would you like? Oh. Fluffy cat. Just like the fluffiest white cat mask, like marshmallow level fluff, you can barely make out any of the features. WTF. <laughs> uh oh. Meow. Um, okay, I guess I asked. Well, I know <laughs> what I'm gonna be working on tonight all alone in my skimpy pajamas. Huntress winks at you. What the shit? Should we, like, get out of here? This deserves a celebration. Okay. I'm gonna say, should we get out of here? These drinks are making me pretty sleepy. Should we just, like, get out of here? Maybe we go get directly into into your bed? No! That's not how tonight goes. I mean, it's not how it's not supposed to go. Not at least. Not yet, at least. Uh, haha, <laughs> you kooky kids. Soon. Huntress, you've got lots of hobbies. Why don't you just share something with us that you're passionate about? Something less deadly than throwing axes or chasing survivors. Maybe just a thought. Making more masks? Or wait, making matching gloves? No, you little joker. I'm thinking of a different type of making. Making our victims die fast, medium or slow deaths, depending on the mood we're in. It's another round of be careful what you wish for on Murderer's Island. Dwight, I need your help. Um, doing something in a different place entirely? You read my mind, we'll meet you there. I'm talking about mycology, you know, mushrooms. I picked a lot of them, and I'm very familiar with which ones make uh, for a great soup base, or which ones make you super dead. I'll show you two mushrooms. You point at which one's safe to eat. <gasps> okay, sounds easy enough. Oh, God! Correct! It's got a black trumpet, and boop! Boop doo doo! It's delish! Next up, this one is very easy. I'm, I'm sure you're now. Point at the one that won't result in almost instant death after you eat it. How do I know which one? Yellow, okay. We don't want to die. Correct, hey, oh, y'all were right. Damn, y'all y'all know your mushrooms. It looks fancy and tastes fancy too. Just like a certain someone I know. I bet, nom nom nom. Final question, which, uh, which will make you jump for joy and which will make you vomit until you die? <sighs> See, I feel like the green they make vomit. So it's probably this one. Right? Cra A green cracking rusala. Uh, sure, it might look moldy, but but I guess you shouldn't judge a mushroom by its gross green cap. Uh, not everything is exactly as it appears at first glance. That was fun, right? I like a little, I uh, like flexing a little more, more than just my biceps for you. Oh my. All right, let's see here. Tabulating your answers and perfect score. That knowledge is gonna come in handy if we're stranded here on the island for much longer. Huntress claps her hands giddily. Uh, I appreciate you spending time with me tonight. I know the other killers are all very alluring in their own way. It means a lot that you'd spend time uh, with a forest bumpkin such as myself. Can I say they are all hot, aren't they? Can I say that? <laughs> uh, who uh, would you sleep with if you could? Come on. Marry, hanky pang, push off a cliff, wraith, trapper, spirit.
Hmm, definitely kill Wraith because I'd probably kill him by accident anyways. <laughs> Nearly smashed his head in just reaching for salt at lunch today. Peggy Peggy with spirit because she's she seems really bendy. Marry Trapper, unfortunately, because he's probably the only one who could survive in my cabin and make himself useful. In any scenario, I'd be very upset. How about you? All right. Um, should I t should I tell her my three? I'll just tell. Her. Oh, I it chose for me. I suppose I'd marry Spirit, get my hang tank on with the old wraith, and push Trapper off a cliff. You know what? Fair. I'm good with this. I'm good with this. You're a naughty little one, aren't you? Oh my. We're here! Oh, we're back! Claudette and Dwight are gathering everyone together on the beach. Typical. Exactly what the voice said. I'm telling you, and I'm being honest, that you're the only one here who can hear me. The gang's all together again. On the volleyball court, seems like only yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was? Oi, feels like I've been here a lot longer, actually. It's so late and the sun is already beginning to rise. Wait. And the sun is already beginning to rise. Better get this over quickly so that I, I mean you, can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the internal damnation of perpetual narratordom. Good thing you've really used your time well since then. Really getting to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl. You know the four types of people. Anyway, everyone gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who Jason chooses. Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? Not not to eat, Huntress. Each killer gets two minutes to tell you about their dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular order, which is a weird thing to mention, right? Almost like uh, the order does matter. Wraith, why don't you go first? You look like you'd hate that. Stop talking. Sorry, anyway, Wraith. Well, uh, I don't know. I'd really just prefer to tell Jason privately. Oh. Um, I don't know really how that's going to work with these game mechanics. <laughs> and what if you just whispered it to Jason? Wraith considers this for a long moment. Too long. That's fine. Without moving, Wraith lowers his voice to do to a barely audible whisper. Tomorrow, we have to find my bell. And then I can finally tell you about what I've been working on. Really special, the kind of thing where we really bond. And maybe we'll finally get off this island. And maybe then we can go on a real date. Uh, you done? Is that it? Wraith nods, proud. Great, Hundress, why don't you take it from here? Tomorrow morning, I'm planning on a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry, Trapper won't even know it's gone. Um, what was that? Nothing, go away. Then, oh boy, boy, oh boy, I've got such an adventure plan. It involves hunting for treasure. What kind of treasure are we looking for? Guess you'll have to pick, uh, pick me to find out. Let me tell you, it's primo stuff. Now, if you don't mind, uh, I've got to start preparing because it's clear already that you're going to pick me. Confident, mysterious, I like it. Hit us, spirit. Figuratively, damn it, Dwight, you gotta watch your words uh, with these people. Tomorrow, uh, you'll spit in the face of God, die, and be reborn anew. That's it? If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you go draw go draw crown art with uh, Trapper or dig up whatever mysteries with Wraith. I don't know what those guys do all day. Uh, do you at least want to specify which God you'll be spitting in the face of? All of them! Okay, so hydrate tonight if you intend to hang out with Spirit. Trapper, without further ado, ado uh, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable not only in polite society but within the narrative of this in-world event and also the larger meta-narrative of Dead by Daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why, yes. Thank you. I'd love to. So, Jason, you're thinking of picking me? Well, this is your final warning. 
pick me and be punished and rewarded? Tomorrow will suck. Probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with. I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that will make fans shit themselves with excitement. If you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. And if you're not a maggot, also everyone, even confident, sexy ladies in rabbit masks better stay the hell away from my yacht. And time's up, everyone. Gosh, you'll need to dream about these options so uh, you're ready to choose in the morning. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so that you're ready to make cho uh, make a choice come on. Have a swell night. Um, did you do forget to mention something? Oh, ha ha, oh gosh. How could we forget? Before you run off to slumber peacefully, there's one more thing you need to do. Uh, no reality survival Dan and competition parody would be complete without singling out one of our contestants who is already teetering on the edge of a psychological break and giving them a little push. Hold up. This has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time and I'm uh, and I'm just now finding out about it? Come on, the signs were there. You just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island! It's now time to eliminate one of the killers! Oof, it's like butchering, but it hurts even worse. I feel like, what, they're just gonna say trickster. Uh, you can't kill a killer, but can you break their heart? Do you dare even try? You mean... That's right, tomorrow one of these sexy slicers will not be eligible to take you on a date. Who's it gonna be? But why? Uh, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Because it's a classic reversal of fate? And it will hurt someone's feelings? Someone dangerous! What's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least uh, you'd see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere. She floats, and I hear she can disappear. Hard to track. Eek, if you get rid of Wraith, he might cry. And although I totally support normalizing men crying and being vulnerable, it just seems like he might be an ugly crier. Huntress, she might pretend to be okay with it, but then you'll start seeing her behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is I don't envy you, boss. So which sociopath are you eliminating? Oh, I'm eliminating them. I choose... Jeez. What did I just say? Look, I'm here and I'm horny. And I'm not uh, really getting positive reinforcement from you, Wraithy Poo. Please don't take this personally. It's just my opinion, opinion of you and who you are and what you're about deep down as a person. And I don't like it. Jeez. Like, give me something you know. A kiss, a wink, hold my hand. Finish telling me about all this mysterious stuff you're so obsessed with. Or better yet, don't. Wraith rises, taller than you'd ever seen him, and calmly walks to the exit. Before he leaves, he, he turns to you. When you came here, I thought perhaps you would be different. I don't know how my last bit of hope in humanity hadn't been snuffed out, but it wasn't. It is now. You are just like the rest of them. There is no hope of goodness here. The only thing I can do is try to escape. Or burn everything and everyone to the ground. He leaves. Pretty badass exit. Was not expecting that. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut-eye. And don't worry too much about uh, the broken heart you've left behind. Because, of course, they'll be receiving a, a consolation prize. They might uh, not get to go home with Jason when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right. We're sending our eliminated player home with... Their own mostly new trickster body pillow. The next uh, best thing uh, to the real trickster. It might not hug you back, but it definitely won't try and stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right. It's Dwight tested. <laughs> Claudette approved.
Um, I hope you sleep well tonight, Jason. You're my hero for what you've accomplished. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, knowing that there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you'll do tomorrow? I don't know how you'll do it, but uh, you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back and put you to sleep themselves. You know the, those two. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Next day. Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. An elimination? I didn't even know that was uh, it was that kind of game. Uh, let's check in with everyone, especially our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. We'll see how things go tomorrow, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything. I tend to shut my mind off during hard times. I know I seem all excited and all excited and devil may care, but the truth is, I'm really a pessimist at heart. That tends to happen when your mother is skewered by an elk when you when you were young. Yeah, how do you know? Wild guess. It's all the only thing uh, you talk about. If you'll excuse me, I think I saw a raccoon uh, over in that train. I'm feeling peckish. I know I said some things when Jason kicked me to the curb, and uh, I just want to say I'm embarrassed for how I acted. Now, uh, not not what I said though. I stand by, and I want everyone to here to uh, to burn. How would I say things are going? It's a matter of perspective. If Jason's goal is to impress me, things are going poorly. But if Jason's goal is to uh, getting uh, is to get themselves killed, they're doing an amazing job. Uh, did I think there was a chance I might get eliminated? Yeah, I did. Did I care if I got eliminated? Not even a little. Does the volume of words I spend talking about how much I don't care about things sign signify a deep yearning within me to be seen, heard, validated by those around me? Nah. What? No, you're not a part of this. You don't get a confessional. It's cool, man. I'm not a part of anything. You feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. This whole thing is pretty cute, though. Charmingly low budget, old school marketing vibes. Not gonna lie. Kind of wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality show style dating competition with survival elements. But I got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the the new sneaker line, producing limited series on my life, starting the new social media NFT crypto app, <laughs> uh, and doing uh, these private gigs over and uh, over on IP Island. Oh my. My dudes, you gotta come check it out. IP Island, it's dope. It's where real killers are hanging out. Fully licensed, no legal drama. Lawyers, take a hike. I'm gonna tell every I'm gonna tell everyone that Trickster said that about them. Don't worry. I'm talking to your favorite established. I'm I'm talking your favorite established characters from all over pop culture that can't be seen on this island. Hell, you probably can't even mention them. Like ghosts. <laughs> Don't say it. Look, we get it. You're very popular popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to, and I don't want to get sued. Ghostface! <laughs> Come on! Trickster! You nasty. Whatever. I don't even care. I'm the trickster. See you around, uh, Jason. You too, narrator. Um, I have a name, you know. You do? Yes, yeah, seriously. They do not pay me enough to deal with you people. Is it my turn? What? No, no, it's not your turn. You're a sen uh, uh, you're sentient water. How are you even sitting in that chair? What's a chair? It's the thing you're, you're getting all wet. Now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay, rude. Fine, let's just get it over, over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in? I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom, are you serious? It's down the hall to the left. It's okay, Never mind. Never mind. what does that mean? No. Uh, not you two. It, this wasn't meant to be a confessional time for literally every character in this game. It's okay. We don't. We don't have. Uh, we don't have to confess. Confess anything. We've just been working our asses off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet. Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How is that pot? You know what? I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to confess. Oh great, what's it gonna be? You ate glue in the second grade. You cheated on uh, an algebra test once. Watching Wraith get eliminated was the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that is my life that I felt even a modicum of joy. Um, every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, this sun, these sweet sugary drinks, it sounds fun for a long weekend, but for an eternity? The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing seagulls, it's like a crescendoing song of evil. 
uh, that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? Uh, what kind of sentient being would uh, do this? Please erase me from existence. Make it so I was never born. Pull the plug on this experiment and let my soul be free. And please, please get me out of this polo shirt. Okay. Let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means eventually I'll have to wake up. Yikes, huh? That was a weird way to end. Ah, uh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, you let the camera roll ro long, long enough and someone is bound to say something crazy. Anyways, uh, seems like everyone had their shot uh, to annoy me tonight. So hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow's going to be a doozy. There we are. Soft uh, sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Uh, also, you're using a killer crab as a, as a pillow, which, which it's sort of okay with. What's that? You don't know about killer crabs? Oh, right. You didn't go on that hunter state. You really missed out. It was thrilling. Or I guess it would have been. You'll have to play the game again uh, to get that reference, I suppose. You pull on your beach attire and splash water on your face. Dwight and Claudette approach. Is that look on their faces excitement? Terror? You notice your stomach flutters with bu butterflies. Someone's in love! Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened here before, but it's probably a love thing. It's time! Claudette gestures over to the beach where all the killers all stand flanked by tiki torches. It's a scene very reminiscent of a TV show you used to hate watch with your ex. <laughs> Suddenly, the message is clear. You're going to declare your affections for a killer in front of uh, several other killers. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money to make some half ass cameos in this show. I'm going to chew his agent out. But before they walk, before uh, they walk over for your big moment, a little birdie told us someone in particular has an extra strong crush on you. And another little birdie reminded us that you've been kind of a dick since you got here, and we reserved the right to withhold that information, even if it leads to you making a terrible decision that gets you murdered. So are you ready? Of course you're not, but too bad. We're on schedule. Whew. Ooh, you make your way over to the row of hotties. Uh, Claudette and Dwight stand off to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours, but uh, there are clearly sparks in the air. I'm not just talking about this rusty chainsaw, though I do re recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time to, uh, for our newcomer to confess their love. Wait, I do, uh, I I have to do a drum roll for this. No, you don't, but who cares, Jason? Who do you who do you choose for your solo date? Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to keep that between us. No, not that flower thing. The thing where the suitor gets a flower as a symbol of the contestant's love and affection. Oh, right, right. I suppose. But no roses. They're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good because I tried to pick a rose, but I got an ouchie, so I settled for these. Whew. Uh, beautiful. You've done good, Dwight. This is a lovely bouquet. I hope Dwight uh, saves some, some of these for Claudette. They're a thing, right? Uh, you're getting that vibe too? Just me? Sorry, sorry. Uh, you've got other things to think about right now. Jason, who do you select to receive these flowers uh, and spend the day with you today? <coughs> We're going back with Spirit again. You approach Spirit, peering below the her brim of impressively large hat and into her haunting eyes. Spirit, since I met you, you've been I've been enchanted by your presence. You've challenged me to be a better person and resisted the urge to show me that sharp end of your katana. For that, I thank you. I'm ready to take our relationship to the next level. And we shall! Up to the eye of the dark storm that uh, that is our re reality, to the lantern room of the Black Lighthouse. Oh, shit. It's time to see what you're made of, Jason. I thought it might be nice to start a day out on Trapper's Yacht before we head up to the Black Lighthouse. Even if I kind of hate this basic tropical vacation stuff like yachts and snorkeling or whatever, it's good for you to see me in the sun a little bit. At least there's more to me uh, than what you've already gotten to experience. Oh my. I know my whole vibe can be a little dark. The hat, the swimsuit, the plume of floating hair. This, this wasn't always who I was. I was a normal young woman once. Went to school, hung out with friends. I even had a part-time job working at a restaurant in town. And then, well, I know what happened. Your father, he, yeah, yeah. He murdered me and, and I was awoke as an undead Avenger. That's not what I was getting at. Something else happened to me. I realized I needed to be seen. I don't even know by whom. I just, 
a lot of time uh, when you think of, when you think about ghosts, they're these kind of see-through flickering specters. Uh, you imagine reaching out and having your hand and having your hand go right through them. Ooh, like that sort of thing. Uh, maybe there is a, some so, uh, some warpy effect on the world around you. I don't know. Depends on which movie you're watching. But when I died, well, I dare you to try and reach your hand through me. Not really. That's not an invitation. It's rhetorical. Uh, why did I end up this way? Who brought me here to this island? Who knows? I sure don't. I've got my ideas. But I'm not exactly uh, out there digging around in caves and dusting off antiques to try to find clues and analyze their meanings. I do want to take this experience seriously, though. I want to give the, uh, the process a chance. Maybe a dumb process and one that I have extremely little respect for as a person. But you just woke up on this beach with no memory of who, who you are or where you came from. And, and rather than freak out, simply try and swim away, you're giving this a chance. I actually didn't know that that swimming away was an option. It's not. However, the fact that you never even tried, I think that means you've got courage or an open mind. Or, I don't know, maybe you just stuck around. Because you like someone you met here. Maybe. While the two of you were getting all deep and uh, philo philosophically flirty, uh, the yacht uh, pulled up to the shore next to the black lighthouse. Last stop, everyone off. Uh, there were other stops? Oh, no, not not of this trip, of your life. Spirit rolls her eyes uh, and leaves for the shore. I'm just messing with you. This was the only stop. Nobody here is is really looking out for, out for our fun, so we haven't have to make it for ourselves. But no, there are no other stops. Seriously, go. Race to the poop deck, Dwight. This ship doesn't even have a poop deck. Oh, it will. As you disembark, you see Dwight and Claudette uh, run giggling across the ship. Too bad you can't date those two. They seem like they know how to have a good time. <laughs> Ooh. You arrive at the beach near the majestic black lighthouse. It's an imposing form towers above you. A flock of birds cir circles lazily. Uh, no sense of fear or urgency. Uh, as if circling a corpse that hasn't moved in ages. I'm excited about today. See? Spirit places her wrist delicately delicately in her in in your hand and presses her fingers your fingers down against her skin. It's cool to the touch, but you feel is that the faintest of pulses? My blood is absolutely pumping. So what happens now? Now I show you something that no one has ever seen up close before. Well, no one who has lived to tell about it. We're going there. Spirit points to the top of the lighthouse amongst the circling birds. Uh, what's actually up there? Have you seen it? Oh, God. Hey, y'all. How's everybody doing today? It certainly seems to be taking the whole elimination thing well. Or maybe this is the opposite of that. Better not bring it up at all and just hope he doesn't completely melt down. Uh, hi, Wraith. You seem chipper today. Something strange is definitely going on with this guy. Well, something else strange something different uh than what's usually going on ray takes a deep breath sucking in the ocean air like it's the greatest air he's ever been that that has ever been sucked jason thank you thank you for choosing someone anyone else to go on a date with today alone again forever this is how i was meant to be i feel alive are you done what we're we're kind of you know on a date that you just mentioned i'm glad you're feeling better Ray. but like you said we're in the middle of something you mind Oh, right, right. So what you doing? Heading up to the Eye of the Lighthouse? I love it up there. You can really see the whole island up there. In fact, Spirit, I thought you said no one has been up there and lived to tell uh, and lived to tell about it, but this sounds exactly like telling about it. Technically, I don't think Wraith counts as being alive. I mean, uh, I don't maintain the canon, but Spirit waves her arms at Wraith uh, from head to toe. And if he's not dead, uh, now he's going to be when I punish him for interrupting our date. Uh, hey, now, we can solve our problems without uh, our hair floating up in any menacing shapes. Uh, I'll just be over here running away. Enjoy the new view. You know, I think Wraith was kidding about the hole being up there. Honestly, the view isn't even of the island. What you can see is mostly ocean in account, uh, on account of it being, you know, a lighthouse. However, that does bring up an interesting point. Regarding your, how do you, how do I say it? Spirit's hands floats up uh, as she scratches her head uh, Thank you contemplatively. So much for 
Anonymous, thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Cold Taxi, thank you for the 28 month support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't usually see her at a loss for words like this. What's your mortal status? Because despite uh, what our lanky friend seems to think, the lighthouse is not uh, to be trifled with. It's a beacon of death and suffering that brings doom from all uh, from all corners of the world, if not further. Well, duh. You saw a freaking pirate ship uh, seemingly travel through space and time only to crumble at the rocks beneath this spooky tower. But you decide not to point it out because that wouldn't be too romantic now, would it? I think I'm alive. I'm here with you walking this beach, feeling water on my feet, feeling the sun on my skin. Here, with me, the spirit. Does that really make you alive? I guess I don't know. If you come with me uh, into the eye of the black lighthouse, you may never return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Because we have something. I won't deny it. I feel it. I'd hate uh, for you simply to turn to ash. If we were to commit right here and now to figuring out this out as friends, we could put put that risk off for another time. Just be friends out. Is this a, a way of letting you down easy? I don't know if I want that friendship. I want you. That's why I chose you. I can't decide this, this for you. I can only warn you that it might not be safe. You might die up here and there's nothing I can do about it. Go up, maybe die. You take a deep breath and think about every particle of the sea air as it travels into your body and fills your lungs. It may be the last time you have such a thought, but you feel strangely at peace with that information. I don't need another friend. I want something more. I'd risk my life for it. Spirit smiles a quirky, devilish smile. Right this way. Oh, God. Are we about to die? Inside the lighthouse, it's almost pitch black. It was seemingly day when you stepped uh, through the door, but inside, the place is like a void. The last thing you see as the final rays of sun leave you is a horrible sight. A petrified body laying on the stairs, reaching not up, but down. As if it had been crawling. Watch your step. The things we do for love. The 4%, yeah. When you arrive in the lantern room at the top of the black lighthouse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The light is out uh, and seemingly defunct. Dust cakes the room as though it hasn't been operated in a century. However, somehow, it was just morning moments ago, but how it, how, uh, but now it's night? What do you mean a moment ago? We've been standing uh, here looking out at the ocean all day. I've really enjoyed the peaceful time together with you. Taking in the view and standing in complete silence for hours, it was kind of my perfect date. Really? I don't remember that. I just called it the perfect date and you can't be bothered to remember it? What kind of game are you playing with me? I want to remember it. It's just that for some reason my mind is completely blank. But hey, I'm not dead. Or you're already dead and you have been this whole time. Hmm, that's true. Maybe we'll never know. It doesn't look like the light is working. Even turned off, uh, the light has a power to it. A massive lens that reflects moon moonlight through itself. Uh, a subtle sparkle ha uh, that has a hypnotic effect. Maybe that's where the day went, staring into the light as uh, as the sun fell and the moon the moon rose. Whew! Thanks for spending the day with me. I had a really good time. That's it. Don't get me wrong. This is really cool now. I just, I guess I don't know what I expected. I suppose if you thought uh, you were walking to your death and nothing happened, it might feel a bit anticlimactic. Sorry. Anyhow, it's time to go. Here, just let me flip on the light for the staircase. It's easier to get, uh, so it's easier to get down. Hmm. The stairs look pretty dark. Maybe it. Spirit is interrupted by a strange hum, and then it becomes frighteningly clear to you. That switch wasn't for the stairs. It was for the main lantern, and the lantern is now beginning to power up. The faintest smell of burning begins to reach up your nose. Oopsie, it looks like maybe that switch wasn't for the stair lights at all. Now we'll see who's really alive and who's really dead, I suppose. It was bound to happen sooner or later. You slam your eyes closed, hoping that somehow not looking at the light itself will protect you. Uh, not sure, I see logic in that, but if it is magic, it kind of defies logic. I want to see it, but well, I'm a little scared. Don't look directly into the light. Open your eyes and look only at me. I'll keep you safe. <gasps> oh my, oh God, I could die from skill checks? <sighs> yes! Oh my God. Oh! All right, that wasn't. Whew. All right, you seem okay. I hope I haven't ruined this by pushing you to do something you weren't meant to do. 
You're so brave. Maybe not so coordinated, but certainly brave. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm so lucky you put yourself through this for me. It shows that you are, that you're real. Despite uh, your attempt to resist it, the incredible force of energy uh, from the Black Lighthouse's lantern uh, I refuses to subside. No, it cannot be ignored. It doesn't matter if you look directly at it or not. In the end, it was just a trivial game. This is real life and real magic. You stare at it now and its power penetrates your mind. Hey, been a while. How are things? Doing good? Feeling more dead or more alive? Yeah, love will do that to a person. Don't worry, it'll make sense soon. You wake to hear spirit's muffled voice. You've you've got a terrible taste in your mouth like burnt hair. The air feels damp and smells like ash. It takes time for the sound to clear up, but eventually spirit's words start to make sense to you. However, it's clear she's talking to someone else, not you. You know how sometimes people say, it's not you, it's me? Well, this time it is you and it's also me. I can't believe I thought you uh, would change for me. I can't believe I thought what you were uh what you were doing was a sacrifice you never gave anything up for me well today i saw what love looks like and it looks like a whole a whole lot different than this who's she talking to oh i don't think you're hearing me which is weird because i'm practically shouting nobody breaks up with trapper nobody Oh yeah? Fine. Nobody breaks up with Trapper. But I'm not doing that. I'm dumping... Don't you say it. I'm dumping Evan McMillan. And there's nothing you or he can do about it. It's over between us, Evan. Rin, I... Trapper turns from spirit and looks directly at you. You realize that you're laying on the ground of some weird tunnel. I think that you're shouting. Woke up, Jason. My shouting? Uh, stay quiet. Ooh, fake somewhere. You tuck your face in your elbow and let out a long, unconvincing story. You might as well have announced I'm awake and uncomfortable. <laughs> I grew up so. Oh. I grew up surrounded by lazy miners who were cons constantly sleeping on the job. I know what a real snore sounds like. Get up, Jason. Huh? Who? What? What time is it? Where am I? Trapper, is that you? You know damn well it's me. The power and beauty of my voice is unmistakable. The jig is, as they say, up. They know you're awake now, and you're going to have to deal with this awkward situation head on. Clearly, I shouldn't be here. You two are having a very personal conversation that I don't need to be involved in. I don't know how I got here, not here on this island or here in this creeping, uh, or here in this creepy tunnel. As far as this island goes, your guess is as good as mine. As far as this tunnel goes, we brought you here. We, you and Trapper, but uh, after the lighthouse light came on, you blacked out. On your way down, uh, I thought you might have hit your head or something. It's hard to tell what blood is new or old around here either way i wanted to get you to someplace safe so i asked trapper for help it's not that i can't carry you it's just that i just didn't feel like it you know <laughs> i hate anything messing with my shards uh uh the trapper on the other hand he loves nothing more than having an unconscious body draped over his shoulder i could have asked claudette or dwight uh for help but i don't trust them but you trust the trapper like and trust are two different things. You might think Trapper can be a real jerk, but you'd be right. Uh, and you'd be right, but uh, you get what you see with him. We brought you down here because we're the only ones who know about this place. It's a part of an old tunnel network that connects different places on the island. <laughs> and here's Wraith. What's up, guys? Uh, talking island mysteries? Uh, my favorite to topic. I was just in the neighborhood, so I, I thought I'd pop in. Trapper, you said this place was private. Don't look at me. I didn't tell him about it. Half of the, the appeal of the spot was getting away from people like him. Well, geez, I can see I'm not wanted. So you three a thruple now or because I got to say, I really didn't get the whole Trapper spirit thing. But hey, it's, if it's not my business, I don't stick my nose in it. 
We're not a thing. Nobody traps the trapper. Not with traps or with relationships. Uh, and you do realize you're sticking your nose in our business right now, right? Wow, so hostile. Uh, if you don't want to talk about it, just say so. Anyhow, this tunnel has some very interesting features. If you head about 50 meters down the way, you'll find... Get out! Wraith looks around uh, just to be doubly sure that Trapper is not is addressing him. I was just leaving. This island, it's a lonely place, which is great for me. I love to be alone. Trapper, on the other hand, he's quite needy. And after a lot of pursuit, I finally let him catch up to me. And it became, well, I don't want to call it a relationship because somebody really didn't want to have that talk. But we are more than friends. I dispute the events as told, for the record. I don't pursue, I stop, and I lie in wait. Seeing eye to eye was not uh, one of the things we were good at. So, I hate to ask, but I did just look into a refrigerator sized death lamp, so I guess I'm more of a glutton of, for punishment than I thought. Uh, what were you good at? Well, for starters, excuse me, I'll take that question. Oh, excuse me, I'll take that question. Thank you very much. If you know anything about me by now, is that I'm on a quest for revenge, everyone, for revenge. Exactly. Uh, what you might not know, Trapper is like, uh, is like a, a great classical maestro of revenge. Trapper blushes behind the mask. Uh, that's one way to compliment a killer. Revenge against friends uh, who had turned their back and betrayed them. Revenge against his father for making him into a monster. Revenge against a barista who wrote <laughs> Ewan on his uh, cappuccino knowing his name is actually Evan. For someone who thinks about revenge as much as I do, Trapper is an inspiration. Uh, but they say never to date your heroes. Good advice, but I don't think that's the, that's the saying. Uh, and then you came along, Jason, and you showed me that it's okay to be lost, to feel pathetic, and push, uh, push on when you have nothing real to offer to anyone. I'm not sure where you got all of that from, but okay. You held a mirror up, uh, to my own doubts and fears and showed me that they aren't, uh, everything about me. That I can embrace those things and not be defined by them. You showed me that life after death can be more than just an obsession with revenge, mind-blowing sex on the ground in the dark cave, or a dusty old tunnel. Oh my! Trapper nudges you in the ribs with his elbow. Gross. Clearly appealing to Trapper's better features uh, has been winning, uh, been a winning strategy for dumping his ass because he seems to be taking it quite well. The whole uh, half-ass dating show parody thing, at first I obviously thought it was a lame idea, but uh, what kind of moron thought there was an audience for this? But then we spent some time together and I realized there's something actually re uh, real here and I don't want to give up on it. I don't want to give up on us. Listen, Jason, while you were knocked unconscious uh, by some minor head trauma, like a total weakling, Spear confided in me that she has real feelings for you. I took it extremely well, naturally. Because I trust her and I value her opinions. Can I date both of them? That, oh. That doesn't mean I trust you. <laughs> oh. By passing the Trapper's Test, TM. Coming to Behavior TV, Sundays, 8 p.m. Welcome to Trapper's Test. Answer my questions correctly, or die by my blade! Question 1. What is Spirit's real name? The one given to her by her murderous father, which she only lets her real friends call her. Rin. Okay, you got that one. Don't celebrate yet. Question 2. What lives inside spirit? A dragon. Sure, everyone knows that. They won't all be this easy. Question three. Oh, where did spirit work back when she was a normal college girl before she was hell-bent on revenge? A restaurant. 
I know. To think I would date a waitress? Don't tell my father I even mingled with the help like that. He'd be so disappointed in me. Question four. What's Spirit's favorite color? Black. Are these questions largely superficial? Sure. Maybe I didn't get to know Spirit that well. Maybe that's why uh, she dumb, dumb, uh, maybe, maybe that's why it didn't work out for us. Who knows? Question five, the final question. You got this, Jason. According to Spirit, what's worse than being dead? Oh, shit. I feel like it's not being seen for who you, who you are. Right? You're, you're feeling that too, Vanta? <sighs> All right. When I pitched Trapper's test to the Suits at Behavior TV, they told me there was no room in the budget for a new car to be given as the final prize for winning. So I killed them all, right there on the spot. While, kill them, while killing them didn't solve any of the budget problems, it sure did feel good. I'm telling you this, A, to brag, and B, to explain why the only thing you're going to win is me saying congratulations for passing the Trapper Test. Not that it was some huge challenge. I mean, the woman obsessed with a giant light that shines in the dark has a chip on her shoulder about being seen. Go figure. You probably guessed, but rules are rules. Even if I literally just made them up, you got it right. So I guess I approve of you dating spirit or whatever. I never really cared in the first place. I was just hoping you'd slip up and give me a good excuse to wet my blade with your blood. Maybe I'll find a reason tomorrow. For now, you two have fun. Wink, wink, wink. Trap her out. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry you had to endure that. What, five measly questions? It was nothing. Not even that, as ridiculous and unnecessary as it was, the whole thing. Waking up in a random tunnel and overhearing our argument, the news that Trapper and I had something going on, and the stupid quiz, all of it, especially the whole Trapper out catchphrase. It's only because I actually like you. None of it would have uh, happened if I didn't. And I, I like you too, Spirit. Please call me Rin. Oh! Rin. Oh, they changed her name to Rin, too. I love it. I didn't uh, really feel like our lighthouse experience was completed. There was something else I wanted to show you. Alone up in the lantern room of the tower. Get your mind out of the gutter, Jason. It's not that kind of game. Is it not? What's that? Hold on a moment. I'm being told no. Wait, it is that kind of game. Disregard the gutter comment. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, this is this is this is wild. Come back up there with me. There's no place I'd rather be. You're excited to return to the lantern room of this lighthouse, despite all of the drama uh, and worry that was previously a part of this place for you. More importantly, you're excited to be here with spirit, which makes it all more crushing when you're interrupted by the arrival of Claudette and Dwight. Fuck! Claudette, Dwight, uh, funny seeing you here. Wait, did I say funny? I meant tragic. Tragic? I don't think so. What, uh, what could be, uh, tragic about a family reunion? Uh, those are always joyous occasions in my experience. Before then, I can explain what's, uh, what's that even supposed to mean. The lighthouse begins to howl a low, frightening sound. The lens begins to glow in, in a now familiar way. You prepare to shield your eyes in case something bad happens to you again. Now, this isn't a time for any re reality show adjacent shenanigans. Dwight, Claudette, shield your eyes. We don't know what this lighthouse will. Now, now, please don't interrupt. Uh, you'd think after all this time, you'd know that we've got your best interests in mind. Wait, what? No, of course. I don't think that I, I uh, got wax in your ears, friend. 
I asked you not to interrupt too late. The black light flares in the darkness. You see something horrible and strange in a place of in place in the place of Claudette and Dwight are two ghoulish silhouettes. Um, but before you can focus on them, the light passes and the two survivors are returned to their normal states. It's breezy up here. I should have packed a sweater. What in the hairy hell? Hey, watch the language. You shouldn't speak that way. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Around your elders! Grandpa? My little Rin, you're such a woman now. They grow up so fast. Uh, what? Chase out, meet Grandpa uh, Kaizen Yamioka. Uh, well, technically, not just Grandpa. Technically, he's my great, 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 great Grandpa. But that's a lot of greats to say in a row. I haven't seen my little Rin since I was over uh, from the afterlife when she was just a little girl. And I expect you all to say the greats. It's a matter of honor and respect, except Rin. She can do whatever she wants, my precious little angel. But you, only stares at you with demon de demonic red eyes. Uh, you're, uh, you, you're pretty sure that uh, even the decorative third eye on his mask is looking at you. You mongrel, you must treat me with respect or so help me I'll be cleaning bits of your head off my uh, uh, cannibal. A cannibal is like a metal baseball glass with, with spikes. Spikes, FYI. Uh, I'm not sure what a peasant like you is doing so close to a descendant of the noble Yamaoka bloodline in the first place. Dirk, Claudine, <laughs> explain what's going on to me. Uh, it's Dwight, sir, and Claudette. Remember, we explained to you that we were going, uh, that you were going to come meet with your great, 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 great granddaughter's suitor and to give or withhold your approval. Oh, God. Five greats. Great, 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 great grandfather, sir. Your honor, master, sir. Dwight, he's a samurai, not a judge. Grandpa, they must have summoned you here because they think uh, you have great judgment and because if they summoned my father, I would be too distracted by torturing him for all of eternity and to continue with the rest of the, whatever this is, show, game, experience. Ah, yes, that makes sense. Only a man of my own power and magnitude can help. Oh my God. Self-important much? Nice to meet you, uh, uh, Kazan. Only my friends and family call me Kazan. Uh, those who tremble in, in in fear at my presence call me Oni. You're seeing the serious resemblance to Trapper <laughs> in not only the sheer size of the man but that Oni is, but also his attitude. Apparently, Spirit has a type. Uh, you sure you can or want to measure up to that? It dawns on you that, wait a second, maybe you do resemble Oni. Every time you've tried to look at your own reflection, however, you become dizzy and confused. This definitely deserves more thought, but now, now's not the time to consider the fact that you might be some some kind of hulking vampire with the first ever case of self-blindness. Uh, there's a massive samurai mad dog in you t from two steps away. Well, you don't scare me at all, so I'll stick with Kazan. Oh my God, Jason! Peasant, I realize now the true purpose of my visit is to extinguish your light. Oni waves his katana at the air at you menacingly, like the great, 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 great grandfather, like great, 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 great granddaughter, apparently. Hold up there, Grandpa. It's not so fast. You're the, you're only supposed to kill them if they deserve it. First, you should get to know know them a little better. Young people these days always waiting to kill people, insisting they must deserve it. Back in my day, you did what you needed to be done because your nobility depended on it. In his day, for such an imposing present, he sure is giving off serious old man yells at cloud vibes. <laughs> You see, when I was a young man, we didn't uh, have foreigners in, in our land. We didn't need them. Uh, we had an abundance of culture already. A little too much, if you ask me. But I didn't make the rules. The rulers did. Exactly how it should be. Literature, art, commerce, theater, fashion, uh, poetry, puppet shows, ghost stories, courtesans, gambling, fighting, fine dining, fast food, public executions. What were we talking about? Spirit giggles at her great, great... Okay, I'm not saying all of those every time. At Oni's forgetfulness. Uh, you wonder... Does she even like this guy? She sure hates her father, so listen up, old man. We don't have time for you to list every activity available uh, to a samurai in the entire entirety of the Edo period. Silence, peasant. You're showing your ignorance. Uh, samurai were forbade from many activities that didn't befit of the Bushido code. Uh, such an attending is such... Oh, I hit the button. 
Now, I'm not saying I did that because I had honor uh, and a body built like an entire castle that is quite hard to hide, but clearly you have neither my honor nor my physique. Uh, you don't even know about the ins and outs of the, uh, of the shifting rules of the traditional Japanese samurai etiquette, you fool. Rin, uh, what would you want with such an uneducated admirer as this? You find it hard to believe that any contemporary person knows all that much about who was and wasn't allowed to do what leisure activities over 100 years ago. However, you're really not sure how to handle this massive demonic old man. Oh, wait. I get it. Sweet Rin, my beautiful descendant. You invited me here to do what you're too kind to do. Bastards jerks head in! Uh, Claude, Doris, fetch my... <laughs> uh, wrap your robe around this mongrel's hands and hold them still. We'll splatter their brains on the beach together as family. Grandpa, no, that's not why I invited you here at all. In fact, I did not invite you. Claudette and, and Dwight did. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, sure. Wink, wink, wink. This whole saying wink out loud uh, thing is getting out of hand. Him and Trapper really do not have a lot, of, a lot in common, do they? I swear, Jason has a good soul and the heart of a warrior. They fought for my love in their own way, faced down death more than once, and put up with their fair share of nonsense. Nonsense which seems to be endless. Can we, I don't know, wrap this up already? Of course, of course. Who am I to expect anyone to wait around for my approval? I've only been hanging out as a ghost and watching my bloodline be polluted by cowards and quitters uh, for five generations. Just come give me your ancestor-in-law hu a hug. Sword drawn, Oni beckons you closer. There's no way he has ever hugged anyone in his entire life. I think I'm good over here, actually. Rin, now push them away and I'll split, uh, split them in half. The sacrifice of this uh, usurper to the Yamioka bloodline uh, will surely bring us back to life and set us back on the course of honor. You're so silly, Grandpa. We both know that only one sacrifice can get the family back on track. Revenge on my father, your great, 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 great grandson, traitor to the Yamaoka name. The lust for violence in your voice, it fills me with cheer. Whew. I'll never forget who I am. I suppose if this, if this is the person you want to be with, to go on your journey of bloody revenge with, I should trust your judgment. The strength inside of you blooms from the same cherry tree that was planted centuries ago by our shared uh, ancestors. And if Jason ever treats me poorly, you have my word in our family's honor. I will wield my katana and gut them like a fish. A tear rolls down from behind, behind Oni's demonic mask. You sure you want to marry into this? One last word of advice, my dear girl. The, the father stuff, don't forget it. Uh, but maybe stop focusing so specifically and obsessively on it. What he did, it was awful, but it was ar it, uh, it was already done. Do something for yourself now. Just my two cents. But uh, be well, Rin. I will see you again soon. Yo, it's so cool that they put Oni in here. Are you kidding me? Now let's go, servants. Clint, Denise... <laughs> Return me to the stables. I assume my dragon has been fed and tended to. Um, yes, sure. I swear, this is uh, still better than dealing with Trapper's dad. I'm sorry if that uh, if I was disrespectful of your great, 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 great grandfather. He seemed like a very special man. I realize I will never measure up to someone like that. A warrior with a hell of a fashion sense. I mean, that mask. Uh, don't worry. I would never expect you to or want you to, really. Uh, if all I wanted was the biggest brute alive, I'd I'd be down in Trapper's Cave right now, avoiding his vintage bear tra bear traps. But that's not uh the life I imagined for myself. This sense of abstract duty, anger at the at a world changing around me, a lust for blood. Uh, that's no way to live. And yet, as you now know, that is the Yamaoka way of life. Forever, I'm cursed to battle against the dragon that lives inside me, or at least maybe I was until now. Call, call me the dragon tamer, baby. You haven't won this game yet. Please don't ruin it. Sorry, I have no idea where that came from. I think we've spent enough time uh, in this lantern room. We should get back to the beach. Whoo! The moonlight sets uh, a romantic uh, mood as the storm clouds roll in and surround the black lighthouse. You know, the sun might have set, but if we wait long enough, it will rise again. Spirit moves uh, her sheer robe, showing you her strappy black bikini. Her pale skin gr glows under the light of the moon. Maybe you could help me get a head start on applying tomorrow's sunscreen? 
Again? I mean, yeah, of course. Last time was, well, I definitely felt more connected to you afterwards. Uh, to be totally real with you, I kind of just asked you as a goof, but I really enjoyed it. I swear, though, if you tell anyone about this, I will not be labeled a foot freak. Uh, not that there is anything wrong with feet. It's just something about that kind of attention that really gets people talking. Steady. Steady. Oh, God. We got to do skill checks again. Oh. Oh God, I hate how it keeps saying almost. Yes! <laughs> yes! God, that's so goddamn hot. I love feeling your hands sliding up and down my feet and between my toes. My skin has never been more moist. Get up here right now. Before you can find a towel to wipe off your lotion hand, Spirit grabs you and pulls you in close. Her lips lock onto yours. They're surprisingly soft and warm. The sensation is incredible. Clouds cover the moon and you find yourself on the beach with spirit in complete darkness. You can feel the narrow straps of her bathing suit come undone and come to life, snaking through the air, wrapping around your body, lifting you up off your feet. Come here, you. So this is what it feels like to fly. As spirit pulls you close, you feel bits of glass press against your flesh. Pain and pleasure mix and wash uh, over you like like the ocean, salty air stinging your skin as you writhe against your undead lover. The lighthouse howls. In the darkness, you're pretty sure that spirit lets the dragon inside of her take over. If it kills you, you're sure it will, be, will, will have all been worth it. The clouds part as you manage to pull yourself exhausted away from spirit. Oh, oh my. A chunk of broken glass is lodged in your shoulder. When you pluck it from your skin, it drips blood. Sorry, I, I think this got stuck in me when we were, when I was, when, you know, I was having the best night of my life. Spirit drags her fingertip over the sharp end of the glass shard. Keep it. Consider it a memento. I've got plenty more where that came from. You arrive at the beach and find Claudette and Dwight waiting for you. <laughs> now it's time, J now is the time, Jason, to face your destiny. Actually, about that. Uh, Jason, can we talk privately? Maybe I'm not here. Maybe someplace else uh, would uh, be better for this talk. You know, uh, you know how, how we feel about schedules, Spirit? Very strongly. Uh, and you know how I feel about you telling me what to do? Don't do it! Like I said, I'd rather have this talk with Jason privately. It's not right to do it here in front of everyone. Oh. You know, from my experience in upper management at my father's mine, I learned that if you're going to fire someone, it's best to do it in public so they don't freak out. Please, enough of the fire talk. Wait, you think? No, she couldn't be. They seem so in love. Well, I mean, not really. Spirit, it's still spirit. But if I tried to imagine spirit in love, I suppose she hasn't attempted to murder Jason yet, so. Okay, fine. Your guess is as good as mine, really. That girl is very hard to read. A word of advice, though. If you're going to end it, end it quickly. In my experience, the more pathetic the creature, the more annoying the final howls are. I don't need any advice. Everyone out, except for Jason. Did someone say final howls? That's my kind of whole jam. I can stay, right? Especially you. Out. Lame. 
Alone with spirit, uh, you feel something awful hanging in the air. More awful than than the lingering smell of the cleaver body spray. Of that cleaver body spray. Uh, that gag. I'm gagging. We're all gagging for cleaver body spray. Spirit, Rin, I I don't know what you plan on saying, but before you say anything, I just, just know that I really, really enjoyed my time with you. Getting to know you over the past few days helped me get to know myself. For that, I just wanted to say thank you. That's sweet. You're welcome. And you know what? It's kind of the thing that shows me that you got a good heart inside of you. Uh, too good for me to carve out and toss into the ocean, but also too good for me to love. I need someone who shares my interests, someone I can connect with, someone jaded and dispassionate, only driven forward by the desire for revenge. I need someone who isn't warm, that I, uh, that I feel cold in com uh, comparison. I need someone who isn't you. Can we just be friends? <laughs> I don't know if... Before you finish that, just know, if we're not friends, uh, we'll probably become enemies and I will destroy you. Friends it is! I'm glad uh, to have you here uh, for me when I need you, but also not too close to me when I don't. So yeah, I'll see you around. Spirit starts to leave. Wait, what? That's it? This is how it ends? You're just leaving me here? I'm not sure I'd uh, uh, use the word ends, and for that matter, I wouldn't say that I'm leaving, but us, we're definitely through. The fact that you can't see that, well, it just proves that we never really belong together anyhow. Good night, Jason. What the hell? I just spent all this time on, uh, I just spent all this time on the island doing everything I could to get to know you, uh, only to be told that I should just leave the chocolate factory and go through, go through the side door. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I said goodnight, Jason. See you around. Jeez, I'm sorry. What a bummer. Hey, why did she keep saying she'll see me around? Gosh, I have no idea. And so, my precious killers lived happily ever after, as they should, learning to love themselves first and foremost. Uh, whilst I trapped in a never-ending cycle of torture of my design. Wait, did I just spoil my true identity? You made it this far. Uh, you should probably know that. That you'll have to play it again to find it play again to find out more goodbye jason see you later and again and again and again forever i mean listen it's a never-ending torture island but we still fucked, so I guess that's fine, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't- I feel like that's good. Each killer has three endings? Oh, that's awesome. That was definitely fun, though. You didn't die? I didn't die. Get the twins in the expansion? Oh, my God. Oh, that's true. I didn't, I didn't lube the feet well at the end. That's true. You know? The dogs are barking. All right, uh, BRB real quick.
All right, what are we playing? Uh, G Love TV, thank you for the 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 raid early. Thank you so much, Gypsy Lady. Thank you for the twenty nine month support. Um, ba 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 ba. B Bean with the hundred bits. Can we please highlight that whole part and sell it on eBay or something? Wait, which part? The end. Baby Grins, thank you for the 14 month support. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Skilled Artifact, thank you for the eight month support. Don't forget to loom up all, all those feet chat. Could see, uh, could save your life. You never know. Never know. Yo, that game was fun. Um, do you... Yeah, do uh do y'all wanna anyone not have a copy of that game yet? We should do a giveaway. It'll be Steam only. But y'all want to do a giveaway for the game? Should we do? Should we? Should we do that? Yeah. It's only for Steam. The code is only for Steam. So, just keep that in mind when entering. Uh, BB, let's do it. Let's give away the game. Exclamation point! Ticket. Uh, again, it's Steam only. Um, everyone can enter. If you're here, you can enter. Exclamation point ticket. No, Kate. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Hmm. Alright. How'd you enjoy the game? I like it. Alright, so the thing is, I would play through it again, but it's gonna be a bit. It's a lot of reading. But we'll we'll spread it out though. We'll 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 do we'll do some more. It's so many words. But then, like, I start to get, like, lazy on the reading, too, where I'm just like, uh, Like, I don't want to read anymore, you know? So many different characters. It's 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 fun. I'm I'm so happy though. Like, cause I didn't know I didn't know Trickster was in it. I didn't know Oni was gonna show up in that moment. That was so cool.
All right, let's close the giveaway. Let's close the giveaway. All right, you know what? Let's draw five winners. Five winners. Uh, kind of wild. Luminous vibe. Uh, Lil Cakes, Lil Jeezy, and Kayla Wall. Hey, congrats, fam. You get a copy of the game. Uh, keep an eye on a message from one of the mods with your Steam code. And now you get to play the game. Sweet deal. Sweet, sweet deal. Ugh. That was burp. Obviously. Um, so tomorrow though, we're going to be doing, um, I guess PTB is tomorrow. I did not realize that. So PTB is tomorrow. So I guess we're doing that tomorrow. Um, we'll have, what else do we have? I think we got some Valorant happening this week. I think we're ending cause like. I don't have, I don't want to play anything. I like, I don't want to start any games right now. Cause I know I'll, you know, I know it would be like quick. So I think I might, uh, end. But you know. Uh, 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 yeah, so we'll, um, oh shit, you know what we'll do right now, actually? It's midnight, so we're gonna raid Chris right now who they're opening pokemon card stream but it's midnight so it just turned crispy's birthday so it's crispy's birthday right now so when you get in you gotta say happy birthday crispy it just it just turned his birthday all right and they're still opening pokemon cards so please have all the fun over there uh congrats on on the winners there that was awesome um and yeah i will see you all tomorrow for some dvd ptb Y'all, please send the love over to Chris and say happy birthday, Crispy. Uh, y'all are awesome. Seriously, y'all are great. I fucking love y'all. Catch on the flippity flip. Send her love to Chris! And say happy birthday, Crispy. You'll see him there. He's visiting. Bye!